The sun is rising on another Solheim Cup as this great spectacle in women's golf commences yet again for the very first time in Spain. We're along the Costa del Sol in Andalucía. And in that grandstand on the first tee at Finca Cortesín, they are locked and loaded, ready to go with our opening session. Uh, you got the captain, Suzanne Patterson, for Europe. You've got the only Spaniard on the team, Carlota Seganda, getting the crowd fired up. And it is vamos time. We are ready for the 18th Solheim Cup from Spain. to present a premier international golf competition from Finca Cortesine in Andalucía, Spain. It's day one coverage of the 18th Solheim Cup. Oh, what a moment this is. We wait for it every two years. And here at Finca Cortesine, which opened a little over 15 years ago, this spectacular piece of property carved out of the Andalathea Hills in the Malaga area, southern coast of Spain, Valderrama just down the road. This golf course is going to be quite the test, especially early in this match play competition. The sights, the sounds, the costumes, Ladies soak it in. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 2023 Solheim. So as the crowd gets ready, so do the players as they try to temper their emotions. Take a look at the format here, as it has been every year since 2011, or yes, foursomes matches, kicking things off in the morning, then four ball in the afternoon. The 12 singles matches on Sunday, 14 and a half points to win the Solheim Cup. Europe having won the last two, need only 14 points to retain the cup. Forsen's alternate shot to begin here. And this first hole, a drivable par four, is what these players will face this morning. The Swedes, the rookies in the Solheim Cup, Maya Stark and Lynn Grant against the veteran Lexi Thompson and Megan Kang, coming off her first career LPGA victory. Celine Boutier, Georgia Hall, unbeaten in foursomes against Danielle Kang and Andrea Lee, a rookie for the U.S. Leona McGuire and Anna Nordquist against Nellie Corda and Allison Corpus, the U.S. Women's Open champion. And Charlie Hall and Emily Pedersen, who teamed so well at Inverness two years ago against Ali Ewing and another Solheim rookie, Cheyenne Knight, for the U.S. So as the Solheim Cup commences, you've got a Ryder Cup captain, Spain's favorite, one of their favorite golfing sons, Jose Maria Olathabal, bringing it out. Welcome. We say hola and ole, ole, ole. <laughs> Grant and Karen Stupples with you. It's so glad to have you as we get ready for another Solheim Cup. And Karen, you've played at home. You've uh -huh. played on foreign soil. You know what it's like, what those players we just saw warming up are feeling. There's really no event quite like it in women's golf. No, it, it brings it all back to me, watching the players standing there on the driving range, warming up. But in the background, they can hear everything that's going on on that first tee. They can hear all the chants. They hear the crowd getting ramped up. I mean, they were coming in here. It was pitch black, and they were filing in in, in the hundreds <laughs> here to come and watch. And having Suzanne Pedersen on mm -hmm. the first tee, Carlotta Seganda, you know, ramping everybody up, creating that party atmosphere, yet the undercurrent of competition uh, and and wanting to go and win, plus the, the added 
bonus of being incredibly nervous, knowing that you're having to perform for your continent or your country. Europe is trying to win the cup for a third straight time. They've never done it. They've won a couple of, in a row a yeah. couple of different times. But as you look now, Karen, at Finca Cortezine, it's a course that even many of the European mm -hmm. players don't know that well. Specifically as it relates to foursomes play, what are you looking at here early? It's going to be, I mean, that first tee shot, let's face it, I mean, it's a drivable par four it's playing into the wind today a number of players can get to that green but whether they choose to do so or not because of the format is, is going to be something uh, that we're going to have to watch out for will there be a reactionary if somebody hits the green do the other team then have to go and try and back it up it's it's going to be fascinating watching it it then follows up with the next par five but this golf course is kind of lopsided in how it sets up for foursomes if you tee off on the on the odds, you're going to have a lot of the putts. Mm. If you tee off on the evens, you're going to have a lot of the approach shots. It's going to be fascinating to see how and who is going to play that first tee shot. And fascinating to see how the captains set up this order with the yeah. veteran Lexi Thompson, who's not played her best, starting things off with the U.S. with Megan King, and then the rookies from Sweden who begged Susan Pedersen. Yeah. Almost dared her not to put them together. I kind of like Lexi Thompson, though. Okay. Sneaky like Lexi Thompson. This golf course is Bermuda grass. Lexi Thompson plays great on Bermuda grass. She grew up on it. And I think, you know, also not having to play every single shot, I think is going to play to her advantage. And I, I like this. I think this is this is interesting for me. But oh. Lynn Grant and Maya Stark, oh. what a pair. What a great start. What a great opening match. See Lewis, the American captain, trailing her opening pair. You don't touch the cup, certainly do you? No. And representing <laughs> Europe, Maya Stark and Lynn Grant. Two good friends from Sweden grew up playing match play together, partnering together in European Tour, uh, European Team Championships. And now they hope to help Europe hoist that cup for a third straight competition from Andalusia, Spain. Spectacular on the Costa del Sol. It wouldn't be a Solon Cup if you didn't have the bananas in the stands. You've got to have a lot of uh, <laughs> blue and yellow, that's for sure. What a scene. We have the Alboran Sea flowing into the Mediterranean, and then that smaller body of water that the players will have to decide whether or not to take on, as you noted, with the wind coming in. Yep, exactly. I mean, there's an, I mean, and the interesting thing is, too, the Americans will, will be teeing off first, so it will be down to the first player to decide who, if they go for it, if they lay up, how, how are they going to play this? Is it going to be an aggressive play, or is it going to be a conservative play? I'll go back to Des Moines in 2017, and Lexi Thompson hit the first tee shot for the Americans, drove the green there. Christy Kerr made eagle, and the Americans went on to win. That was their last victory in the Solheim Cup. We'll see if Lexi maybe brings out the driver to start things off. And there will be some players who will want the crowd to continue to cheer as they're teeing off. That's always fun to see who likes that. Oh, Daniel Kang was, was that person. You can just feel, you can just feel it all brewing right there on the first tee for these players. It's just going to be epic. What is it like? 
you've been there. Oh, it's so intense. Like, there is that party feeling. You, can, you feel like you want to party, but, but you're almost going to feel like you're throwing up at the same time. Like, it's just the most intense feeling you'll ever feel in golf. You kind of want to soak it in, but you can't let yourself. You've got to remain focused on the job. Got the Junior Solheim Cup contestants there, Yana Wilson among them. They've got some sweet dreams, hoping they'll be down on that first tee soon, as so many of these players themselves were. There's Lexi. She's going to hit the first tee shot. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 2023 Solheim Cup. On the tee, representing the United States of America, Lexi Thompson. Looked like less than driver in the practice swings. Nope. Well, let's see. Closer look there. Brother Nicholas on the bag. I think Lexi will tell you that Driver is probably the best club in her bag. Yeah. Well, here we go. <laughs> 28 year old. Struggling this year like she never has before but in a competition that she says she loves more than any other and a chance to start things off in a big way for the Americans. Greenside bunker. Not a bad play. She's gonna have Megan's gonna have a long bunker shot. Anna Davis, Augusta National Women's Amateur And Jane. on the tee for Team Europe, Lynn Grant. Well, two years ago, Lynn Grant and Maya Stark at the last Solheim Cup had just turned pro. Now each is an LPGA winner, multiple ladies European tour victories, and they have the potential to be a dynamic duo for a long time to come. They sure do, and uh, this player here, one of the best ball strikers on the LPGA Tour. and the observer is Connor Finlay. We are underway in the 18th Solheim Cup from Andalusia, Spain. Daniel Kang and Andrea Lee making their way to the first team. Andrea Lee. The, uh, next they'll play the second foursomes match for the U.S. And they'll take on that powerhouse tandem of Celine Boutier and Georgia Hall. Spectacular morning here, Karen. Absolutely gorgeous. Everybody's filing on down just to, I mean, that's a great little spot there up by the first tee. You've got the fifth tee just to the right of it. You can see quite a bit of golf from that area. You never quite know in match play, do you? Who's going to mesh well together? How brilliant were they at Glen Eagles? They went unbeaten. Perfect. And they're going to play again together. Georgia Hall and Celine Boutier, now both major champions. Well, and, and I think that's, that's an interesting prospect. I think when we saw Celine Boutier at Glen Eagles, she was kind of relying on Georgia to kind of pull her through. Um, now Celine has become quite a dominant player on the LPGA Tour. Um, very consistent, very solid in her own right. And I think this has only strengthened that partnership. Right. 
Tom Abbott's going to join us in a bit. John Wood is going to follow this first match, and he's down there to tell us what he sees for these upcoming second shots. Thank Hello, John. You. Yeah, you're up to ball. I got a little bit of an unlucky break. It raced through that greenside bunker. Now she's, uh, Maya Stark has a side hill lie in that Bermuda rough, which is completely unpredictable. You can see a lot of the ball, but in terms of how it's going to come out, sometimes these can come out almost like mini flyers. Sometimes they can come out really dead if you catch it on the top of the club face. So of the two shots, uh, this is definitely the more difficult of the two. Uh, the U.S. ball is flat in the bunker, not a tough bunker shot. So I would say advantage U.S. right here. This is just a tough shot for Maya Stark. Especially for your first of the day, Karen. <laughs> No question about it. She does have a good pair of hands on her, though. So, I mean, we've seen her play some really great chip shots in the past, but she's going to need all that creativity here. Yeah, that's uh, in the bunker, I believe, still, right? Yeah. Un I mean, it's so hard to get any kind of distance on that because you're having to grip down so much. I mean, she took a fairly big swipe at it as well, but it was just so tough and sticky. In Megan Kang, you've got one of the best bunker players in all of women's golf. And how about this second? Yeah, it is a long bunker shot. The good thing is she doesn't have to carry it all the way at all. She can probably land this 15 yards short of the hole. There's a little downslope there where it'll kick right down to it. We saw Stark. That was a perfect example of just the club getting underneath, catching it high on the club face and having it coming out dead. So very important to give her partner a look here. That's okay. I mean, it, it's a, I mean, you still advantage America, but if you're a European player, you look at it and go, okay, the, the window is still open here. They haven't closed the door on us just yet on this first hole. And Europe's third sh looks fairly straightforward, Karen, does it to you with a bunker shot? John, you're down there. It is very, very straightforward. No, you know, not much green here, but uh, plenty of green from the, where the ball is on the upslope. But, you know, there's, as Karen will tell you, there's just such momentum in every hole in these matches. All of a sudden now, they're forced to get this up and down, most likely to even have a chance to tie the hole. But yeah, very straightforward shot here. I would have liked that a little closer. Let's say that was four ball. Would that be one she's thinking about making? I think she would have definitely been a little bit more aggressive than that. You can hear the music cascading down the hill here to the first green and an opportunity for Lexi Thompson and Karen, a player who has carried the banner for the U.S. for the last decade, really the face of American golf for so very long in places on the leaderboard that we just haven't seen her very often and yet an opportunity here to give the U.S. an early lead. It is, and, and I would say, and, and you know, John can, can speak to this as well, that Lexi Thompson, having grown up on Bermuda Greens, I think really gives her a little advantage uh, on this golf course. I mean, John, you, you know that too. Like, if you've grown up on Bermuda, Bermuda Greens, you just understand them a little bit easier than people that don't. No question about it. You just see it and you feel it. It's a different feel. Uh, you made the point earlier, Karen, that it, it'll be nice for Lexi to hit a lot of the first putts, meaning most likely she won't have a lot of short ones. So kind of a free look here with the, her opponents in there, still about six to eight feet for par. So moving slightly to her left. Oh. Conceded for par. And now Maya Stark will have a par putt to tie the hole. And if this was a broke play, Karen, obviously you wouldn't, uh, it's just a, you know, nice par putt. You'd love to make it, but, you know, just to get a tie on the first hole when it looks like you may lose it, huge momentum boost, and the crowd will absolutely erupt if she can get this one to go down. No question about it. And 
You know, what I do know from having watched Maya Stark play and putt, she likes to putt aggressively. Like she likes to get the ball hit in the hole fairly firmly. So this will actually kind of suit her. Yeah, I'd say that's a great thing in, in match play format in general because a lot of times the next one is not going to matter. Yep. And that's the, the entire case here. The next putt is totally irrelevant. It's 100% made. going out first, begging Suzanne Pedersen to play together. She puts them out first. She was aggressive. And it was a misread. You could see where she was aiming it down there on the right side. She putted it as she wanted to. Just didn't read it right. Lexi and Megan Kang go one up. Danielle Kahn. Two players for the U.S. here average to maybe slightly below average in terms of distance off the tee. But you've got Andrea Lee. It's lots of fairways and you got a great putter in Danielle Kang. Well, you're going to see a, a different strategy here. Danielle won't be trying to attack this green. She's going to put it in a place that Andrea can hit a good approach from. But Danielle. Yeah, you noted it earlier. Yeah. She's like, bring it. Danielle is probably the best putter on the American team. So. And now on the team representing Europe, Sally Celine Boutier was already a very good player. This year, she's moved into a different category. She's now a great player and a major champion. Yeah, she's, she's hit the speed track on Super Mario Kart, hasn't she, <laughs> with her career. match took driver went for the green got up there around it and both teams in the second match opt to lay up so a one-up lead for the u.s in that first match here in session one and the second match is just underway it is time now for our captain spotlight and it's presented by kpmg we send it down now to Kay Cockrell. I'm alongside Captain Stacy Lewis. There's been a lot of hard work, preparation, anxiety, build up for the Solheim Cup. It's on, it's, it's already started. What was your big message to the team last night? Just to be themselves and don't wait on Europe to make mistakes. You know, let's go, let's go make birdies. Let's go win this thing and, um, and worry about ourselves, be ourselves. You know, everybody plays this game differently and you know, the, these, this group is so chill and so calm. Um, you almost wonder if they're pumped up and ready to go, but I know they are. It's a young team. You have five rookies, three of which you put out this morning. I'm going to be following the second group, Andrea Lee, with veteran Danielle King. What did you like about this matchup? Um, you know, they, well, one, Andrea wanted to play with Danielle, wanted to, to play with her, and just their games meshed so well. I mean, they were a little bit concerned about the length that they hit it and just tried to assure them, you guys do this every week, you know, go be yourselves. You know, that's what I just told them, go play golf the way you play golf, and I'm excited. I think this is going to be a good one. This is one of the most exciting events in women's golf. We look forward to watching it unfold. Congrats and best of luck today, Grant. Okay, thanks, Stacy. Thank you. And Stacy is using the KPMG Performance Insights data to help make team decisions as Megan Kang lets it rip at the par five second. Up the right side, may need a good bounce here. I 
I think she uh, got a friendly bounce off of a spectator's leg. Megan coming off her first career victory just a couple of weeks ago up in Canada. And now Maya Stark. Karen, I watched Maya at the uh, Women's U.S. Open at Pebble this year, and boy, I like this golf swing. So much speed, so much power. It'll be close whether she can cover that left-hand fairway bunker or not, but if she does, this hole will be reachable in two as a par five. Well, especially with Lynn Grant's extra, extra power as well. This is right at the right edge of that bunker, meaning to go. Did it catch it? It caught it. It hit the grass and kicked straight up in the air and came back a little bit. So that has found the bunker. All right, back to the first we go and second shots for match two. Georgia Hall is going to go first. adrenaline there and that's a bit of a, a huge mistake she had the chance to set the tone to put one in close and now she's she's opening the door for for the american side yeah john noted over the green is not ideal nope big slope back there and it's very grainy if you're on the upslope stacy mentioned andrea lee in portland a few weeks ago said she wanted to play with Daniel Kang and here they are in a chance for Andrea. Might come back just a touch. It'll be a birdie putt for Daniel Kang. And Europe is over the green. The first match with an early lead for the Americans as the 18th Solheim Cup continues. At the first hole, Europe has about six feet for par. Kay Cockrell is watching as Danielle Kang has a putt to win the hole. Grant, this is a downhill putt just inside 20 feet. Oh yeah. That's DK walking it in for birdie, and the Americans have won the first hole in each of the first two matches. Statistically the best putter on the American team. It kind of set up perfectly for them with laying it up so that then Danielle could then hit the first putt. And the only one who carried her putter in a rifle case. Separately. She didn't have, didn't have her clubs. They didn't get here until Tuesday. But she carries the putter with her at all times. The one that she helped create with Scotty Cameron. And it leads to a birdie at one. Getting ready for match three. Nellie Corda and Allison Corpuz. And Nelly's going to take driver off one here in this foursomes match. Oh, oh a little low draw. Oh, too low. That didn't cover I'm much land, did it? No. It was drawing. Now the most experienced player for either team in her eighth Solheim Cup, Anna Nordquist. Not sure she would have taken Driver anyway, but certainly not now, right? No, I'm I 100% certain that, that Driver was not going to be her play. I think Anna 
is going to have a lot of fun playing with the Maguire. This match is Christian Senga. You know firsthand, having played with her, what a classy player she is. Oh, absolutely. But also, in this match, Leona Maguire is sneaky competitive in all manner of ways. It could be Alison Corpus hitting a third shot from the tee. We'll check. First, we go up to the second and a third shot from Maya Stark. Yeah, Europe laid it up nicely out of that fairway bunker on the right side of the fairway here. 119 total. A little bit of a helping win. Very accessible pin. You have to guard a little bit against long here. Anything long will skip way down this steep slope and over the green. Good strike, taking in low on a good line. May need to get down a hair. It does. That'll be a birdie putt for Lynn Grant. And we have a third coming up from Megan Kang, right? From 106, dead center of the fairway. Thought Lexi might try and bump something up a little closer to the green, but decided to lay up, give her partner a good number here. This course, Karen, is just impeccable, every inch of it. Every fairway is perfect. The greens are unreal. The sand is some of the best sand I've ever seen. So I think players are really raving about this place. I mean, it is it's stunning. And, and when I went out and did my little walk around, you could tell where the players were laying up to, where they were hitting their tee shots to, because there was like two or three divots in only a few spots on the course. That's how little there was out there. And that's a Tremendous response from Megan Cam. You love her hitting approach shots and Lexi putting first, I don't you? Absolutely do. Her approach game is is been stunning and, and Lexi's first putts are really good too. So early leads for the US in the first two matches. Day one, session one of the Solheim Cup. to take the USA. All right, so with the Americans in the water off the tee, this is a second for Leona McGuire at the first. And the ball you see there on the green was hit by Allison Corpus. That'll be a par putt for the Americans. Meanwhile, up at the second, this is Lexi Thompson to win the hole. It was a bit jarring when you saw Lexi's name in the first match, given how she struggled this year. But you kind of thought it might work, and it so far has. So far, it's put so good. I mean, she got off to the right start on the first hole, put her partner in a, in a decent spot in the bunker. Um, and also, it's paired off quite well here on the second hole as well. And she's playing with someone who's riding a confidence high that she's never had before, Megan Kang, having just won her first LPGA event in the last month. Well, we've already seen a lot of drama on this first hole, as we were expecting. Oh, we absolutely have. I mean, I also like the fact that Megan Kang is kind of a pump, pump her up kind of rah-rah kind of player too. I think Lexi kind of needs that to kind of G her up and kind of help her along a little bit. I think, I think the partnership was, is very solid. The U.S. has not led after the first session in a Solheim Cup since 2009. 14 years since they've led after the first session. So the early red for the Americans is a welcome sight for sure. Anna Nordquist, a long putt, but one to win the hole for the Europeans. And you can see that Leona was was disappointed with with how she played the second shot. Uh, she obviously pulled it, and this part's going to be really slow. Um, it's putting uphill. It's going to be into the grain. But as lag putters go, Anna's probably one of the best in the business. On or off the green? Yes, exactly. Right?
her 28th Solheim Cup match. What are her nerves like compared to, let's say, Stark and Grant in their first? I don't think they ever diminish. <laughs> well, it's a family affair for both captains. And Stacy with her daughter, Chesney. Husband, Garrett Chadwell, is here as well. I believe that par putt has been conceded. Europe, which means Nelly Corda, who hit her tee shot into the water, has this putt to tie the hole. And something that is strange and different is that the intensity of the first tee is there, the crowd's there, then it goes incredibly quiet when you hit the shot. Then you get up at the green, and it's still a rowdy crowd going on behind you. It's very hard to keep your focus. So Europe has a lead. With the Americans leading in the first two. All right, one more match to go here in session one. Charlie checking her phone. Playing with Emily Pedersen. They were a nice duo at Inverness. Emily, a captain's pick. Charlie, the, uh, one of the best putters on the on the European team. Emily, really great ball striker. They should be able to partner well on this golf course. To the third we go, and we say good morning to Tom Abbott. Thank you, Grant. Great start for Lexi. And here's her tee shot to the par three. 183 helping win. This is five iron just right at the flagstick. Yeah, and it's a very good shot for distance, and it will um, leave the Americans a chance for birdie. That's not what Europe wanted to see after the uh, hot American start. Now, Lynn Grant playing the odd holes for Europe. Yeah, Tom, you get the lead in a match and just want to put pressure on your opponents, and that's exactly what she did with that shot. This one headed right as well, meaning to get up. It's going to miss the green there. So, mistake for Lynn Grant and the U.S. in control of that first match. The visitors get to tee off first. Mm -hmm. So, we've seen that in the first three matches. Ali Ewing and Cheyenne Knight. A captain's pick from a player that she said she grew up idolizing, Stacy Lewis. Both grew up in the Woodlands area near Houston where the Chevron Championship is contested and Cheyenne now in her first Solheim Cup. I think if I had to sum up Cheyenne in one word, it would be gritty. She has never played for her country. This is the first shot she has hit in competition representing the U.S. And she called it a dream come true. And now it's turn for Team Europe on the tee, Emily Pedersen. Oh, You mentioned it. Top five in ball striking mm -hmm. and total driving on the LPGA Tour. Hasn't won on the LPGA Tour multiple wins. The Ladies European Tour. Were you surprised when she got picked by Suzanne Patterson? No, I think that Suzanne looks at Emily and she sees herself. I think that they are very similar in all manner of ways. Distance to spare. Boy, was that smooth. Can't tell if that dripped into the bunker or not. Charlie may like it. We, we've seen her holding out from all over. Yes. Both sides of the pond this summer. But again, this, this works out well. I mean, Emily, great ball striker. 
Charlie, one of the best putters on tour. It's a head out this start. The Americans win the first hole in the first two matches. Europe gets the one up lead in match three. If Stacey Lewis was trying to get some confidence into Lexi Thompson, it may be working. Well, no question about it. I mean, that's the, the I mean, just a fabulous start. Has been helped a little bit along the way by Stark and Grant. I think that maybe nerves come into play for, for the rookies there, but we'll just see. We're at the second and a third shot for Georgia Hall on this par five and Kay Cockrell is there. Yeah, a little bit of a nervy shot since she sculled the last one. Obviously played that safe. And back on the tee at this par five second, Leona McGuire played all five matches, went 4-0-1 at Inverness. She was the undisputed, even though it's unofficial, the undisputed woman of the match at Inverness, Leona McGuire. No question about it. All right, Tom to the third. Yeah, must make here for Europe, Lynn Grant. Yeah, start to get a poor pitch, didn't quite get enough top, so America will have two points to win another hole in this match. And will they even need to see a putt? Maybe see the first one, maybe not. We'll check back to that in a moment let's go to the second and one of the straightest drivers on the planet Allison Corpuz that's about as long as she'll look at a tee shot right there. <laughs> the US Women's Open champion at the last Solheim Cup she was an amateur hadn't even joined the LPGA Tour up to the second, Green and Danielle Kang to win the hole. Just outside of 20 feet, uphill putt. Yeah, going uphill into the green, Karen, these putts can be very slow. No question about it, in the same way as if you get the opposite and have the, the downhill down grainers, they're going to be like lightning. There was a couple of greens out here on the golf course that the rules officials had to slow down just a little bit because of that. So the Europeans are going to see a putt for the U.S. and that's going to be enough to win the hole. So a dream start for this pair, three up through three. There were a lot of question marks about Lexi Thompson and whether she should play in a foursomes format, which remember is the alternate shot. And so far, that decision looks like it has been a good one. Let's go back to the first. And this is the fourth match, fourth and final match in session one. And a player that Stacey Lewis said she could have put with anyone, Allie Ewing, playing with Cheyenne Knight. Absolute epitome of a utility player. See, ball was above her feet, having to make sure that she doesn't pull it. Oh, she pulled it back. Third Solheim Cup for Ali. Her first was at Glen Eagles. The last time it was in Europe. Stacy Lewis was on the team but couldn't play because of an injury. Ali stepped in. There's a little showmanship to Ali. I remember watching at Inverness. And she did some karaoke, like on the she, on the team. Yeah. She's got the moves. Well, Charlie Hall, she's always said this, Karen. She loves to in practice to put herself in difficult spots. How difficult is this one? Well, ball is well below her feet. So making good contact here is going to be awkward. You can see how the club wants to get stuck in that Bermuda grass. And she's going to have to judge the, the release on the green. She's got a little slope to go up where the flag is located on the highest portion of the green. She said she does that just to test herself. She likes to put herself in difficult positions and see if she can get herself out of it.
very good. I think from that lie, that looked really awkward. I think you'll take that all day long. She's in some kind of form, isn't she? She really is. Well, Tom called it a dream start. Megan Kang and Lexi Thompson have won the first three holes, and here's Megan on the tee at the par five fourth. Water protecting the green for those who may want to think about trying to reach this green in two. And Maya Stark on the tee. What are they feeling right now, the rookies? Oh, they, they, they feel like they've been hit in the gut a little bit. Three downs, tough to come back from. They're going to have to work really hard, start playing some good quality golf. All right, so a couple of birdie putts at the first, beginning with Denmark's Emily Pedersen. worst putter on the European team. So this is an unusual combination to see Charlie taking the tee, at the tee shots on the evens and having Emily taking the tee shots on the odds because she's going to be having the majority of the first putts. Well, we go to the second and the third shot on this par five for Alison Corpuz. See the duck on the bottom of the bag for the Americans. That's a tribute to Shirley Spork. That was her favorite mascot, one of the 13 LPGA founders who has passed since the last Solheim Cup. And Tom, it was great every year to see Shirley dancing on the first tee at Solheim Cups. We miss her. Yeah, she was always uh, dressed up and ready to go. Watch the best players in the world battle it out. What a shot that was from Boutier. Celine Boutier and Georgia Hall against Danielle Kang and Andrea Lee. The Americans are one up. So go back out to the second. And Leona McGuire with her approach. Made the correction from that first hole when she tugged at a touch. Yep. Yeah. And you can see that, um, you know, just looking up, looking down there, and you can see Anna standing to the side. Just a figure of calmness. Just a moment ago at the fourth, this is Lexi Thompson's second. 191 front, 230 total. Great chance to put a lot of heat on Europe here if she can get this up by the green. Taking iron, she's gonna have to go right with this. I don't think it's enough to online to carry. So she has gone right. See if it stops short of that bunker or not. We lost it. Can you see it, John? I, it was right at the greenside bunker. Okay. I couldn't tell where it, where it stopped. It's not too bad that uh, she's concerned. Doesn't appear. I mean, the adrenaline was pumping there. That that <laughs> almost carried the bunker. It did. Incredible. Europe now, 227 total. So important here, just to, you can't get it all back at once. You just gotta tell yourself, win one hole. One hole changes the minimum entirely. This is up the right side as well, very low. 
See if it stops short of that bunker. It does not. So a couple long bunker shots coming up. John, how about the wind this morning? You know, it's it's right to left on this hole out of the west, but the thing that's tough about this this course is you get lost a lot. There's a lot of hills surrounding you. You don't necessarily know, so you've got to have a wind chart here. All right, just a moment ago at the first, Cheyenne Knight to win the hole. like that uh, grazed the right arc of the cup. So Knight and Ewing, Ty Hall and Pedersen on hole one. This was earlier. Maya Stark had this putt to tie the hole with Lexi and Megan Kang. You said she liked to be aggressive. She was that for sure. Danielle Kang had this for birdie. Well, and Danielle's the only one that we've seen that's at read the putt correctly. This drivable par four with water in front. Nelly going for it. Oh. It would lead to a bogey for Nelly and Allison Corpuz. So all four matches in session one have finished at least a hole. The Americans lead in a couple of matches, Europe in one. Back at the third hole, Georgia Hall missed the birdie putt for Europe, so Daniel Kang has this to tie the hole. It's a good putt, and the Americans will take some momentum, I think, there, because Europe had a chance to take the match back to all square. It was a good tee shot from Celine Boutier. A couple of mistakes early from Georgia Hall, first hole, and then the missed putt there. So the Americans still leading in the second match. Let's go to the second hole. And Anna Nordquist has this to put Europe two up against Nelly Korda and Alison Corpuz. Conceded for par, so that is a tied hole and a one-up lead for Leona and Anna. All right, we've got some bunker shots at the par five fourth, and here's Stark. Megan Kang's going to have a bunker shot here in a moment. Also a third on this par five. But first, back to the tee, and Andrea Lee. As usual, a quick reach for the tee for Andrea. Yeah, she's uh, incredibly accurate. Obviously not long, but I mean, accuracy is great in this format. All right, now Georgia Hall. Partners today, they played off in Phoenix earlier this year. Celine Boutier beat Georgia Hall for the first of her three wins to three. It's Nelly Corder on the tee at the par three. 186 yards. Oh, that's oh. a wonderful tee shot there from Nelly. Remember the Europeans one up in this match. number four you may be able to see the coin of the Americans this is Lynn Grant for birdie beg your pardon par putt oh. we saw the bunker shot of Maya Stark well 
double check that. First, back to the second and Emily Pedersen. First Solheim Cup for Pedersen in Europe. All right, so up at the fourth green, Lexi for birdie. Just slightly to her left, fast putt. <laughs> Just a little too high there. Europe not quite in with five yet, though. Yeah, that was a birdie putt for Grant. And so Stark has that for par. Europe at this point just trying to tie a hole. They've lost the first three. Uh, oh, and so sometimes that's that's what you just need, just to kind of stop the rot a little bit, stop the slide, and then you can start building from there. Europe has won four of the last six Solheim Cups in two in a row. As we go to three. Missed the green with the tee shot. Oh, no. And that was close to where the uh, Grant Stark pair had some problems right of that green. It's quite steep down there. And very grainy. The, yeah, very good. This golf course is Bermuda. Yeah. And uh, players have talked about the fact there's a, quite a bit of grain out there. But it's a modern strain of Bermuda that doesn't need as much water. Um, so now... Nordquist, you go, this has to go in, really. Always the best part of her game, but sometimes when you have to make it, it dials you in. Now, Anna may see one putt from the Americans here. You'd see one putt, wouldn't you, Karen? Or would you just get on with it and move on? Mm. Don't it, want to give them any confidence. That's true. Just see one putt. Oh, no. Move on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm betting my bets over here. I'm like, ah, you know. You see how it feels when you're down there. <laughs> this is the tee at the fifth, and some strategy comes into play on this hole. Yeah, time. You're kind of forced to lay up here. The fairway cuts off about 260. And there's a little tree right in the, kind of in the middle of your eye line and a bunch of that Bermuda rough. So Lexi going with iron to keep it short of that. I think if Lexi got the driver out and absolutely ripped it, she could go through to that second fairway that you're just seeing on the right side of your screen, but not worth the risk in uh, the foursomes format. Especially three up early. Yeah. You want to make your opponents earn everything to get back into it. Wow. This is right up the right side. May need one kick. <laughs> yep. You can get some favorable bounces on this golf course if you know where to miss it. The terrain here is very similar to Southern California if you're playing in the San Diego area or around Los Angeles. The canyons and uh, quite barren mountain-like terrain. Now, Lynn Grant. Looks like a hybrid or a fairway medal for Lynn Grant. Probably not quite as long as Lexi, but, you know, Tom, what's interesting in these team events, sometimes obviously you're paying attention to your own match, but you can get a huge burst of adrenaline if you see one of, or one of your early groups with a bunch of red on the board which this this team is doing so far for the United States it's up the right side as well good looking tee shot I think this was a pair that Suzanne Pedersen always had in mind to play together so if the Americans can win this match um, you know, that may change some decisions for Suzanne Pedersen Maya and Lynn have played a lot of amateur golf together and had a lot of success as a pair. Let's go back up to the third. And Corpus, a couple of putts to win the hole for the Americans. So just need to edge this one down there. Don't do anything silly. I think that'll be good enough. And there is um, red on the board and no blue at the moment in this Solheim Cup. Early stages here at Finca Cortesin. We're on the Costa del Sol down on the south coast of Spain. This is how it looks. Great start for Lexi Thompson and Megan Kang. Day one foursomes 
in the Solheim Cup. Back out at the fifth, which is just a moment to go. Megan Kang with her second. 138 back into the breeze. This is Maya Stark. 120 from downhill live drive or flight this ball down into this breeze. Pinned on the left side of the green. This is left of the hole, meaning to get down, but it looks like a good distance. Yeah, fine shot there. Brave shot to take it left of that hole. In. And a putt for Cheyenne Knight to win the hole. A couple of early opportunities for Cheyenne. And conceded. Yeah. And I think it just goes to show that, they, that we've seen a number of putts missed today. These greens are tricky. I mean, lots of slope, undulation. And grain evolved too. So Lexi Thompson and Megan Kang out first against the Swedish Solheim rookies, Maya Stark and Lynn Grant. Big lead for Thompson and Kang. Udi and Hall unbeaten. They did tie a foursomes match, but that one, they won the last two holes to get a tie and break the American hearts at Inverness. Nellie Cord and Allison Corpuz have tied that match losing the first hole. We're at the fourth, and this is Andrea Lee with a third shot. Yeah, this is a 40-yard shot uh, to the hole, 10 paces to the front of the green, another 30 paces on where the hole's located. Europe is on the green in two, and we'll be looking at an eagle putt of about 30 feet. So imperative for Andrea to get this up Relatively close, ideally inside five feet. And that was not what she was looking for. Very difficult chipping out of this Bermuda rough. Right back at the second, and that fourth and final match in session one. Charlie Hull to tie the hole. Wow. They both seen they both saw the same thing. Yeah. Cheyenne stayed left, Charlie stayed left. All right, so the US leads in three of the four matches as we go to that first one at five. Yeah, great look at this uh, first six hole stretch of the golf course, which is on the other side of the road to the rest of the course, and those beautiful villas that uh, line the outside. They've re jigged the uh, routing here so not how you would play it if uh, you came to play now Lexi down the hill she and Megan read this putt together picked out a spot and moved slightly to the left now for the first time Europe actually has a chance to win a hole here so this would be a huge for them mentally here just to get one in the bank and crawl a little closer yeah the Americans won the first three holes in this uh, match Teed off at 10 past 8 local time here. It's a six hour time change between uh, Spain and the east coast of the US. Nine hours to uh, the west coast. And in Hawaii, probably just having dinner here with a bit of live golf from Europe. Big no. putt, though, uh, John. It sure is from the exact opposite side of the hole, back up the hill, maybe moving a hair to her right. If she can get this one to go, it'll feel like way more than a one-win hole. This huge crowd will go crazy, and they'll finally feel like, okay, we're climbing back in, let's go. Mentally, such a huge difference. Oh, and just 
too much speed, didn't it, on that line? Great yeah, look. And they've got left. They got work left here. That's a good four feet pass. Yeah, there you can see. Really, just drilled it. And even the mumblings in the crowd are a little yeah. unnerving to the players too. All right, Kay mentioned it. An eagle putt for Europe at four. Uphill, right to left breaking putt. Oh man, that carried way too much speed. Danielle Kang will have a birdie putt in longer range, but uh, not in yet for Europe for birdie. Speaking of not in yet, back to the fifth. Yeah, Maya Stark now. I mean, this, John, wow, if, if they three putt from there. Yeah, and, and that really felt like a forced putt. I'm forming a drill this one in the hole. Um, you know, it wasn't a normal putt. Obviously, it was forced, not a normal putt at all. So, huge putt here just to stay in this thing. Three down, four down is just a different kettle of fish. When you've taken the pick, you've always got to go back to the phone and scroll through and check whether it's acceptable. Just like those two fans there. Oh, yes. Yeah, well done. Breathe a little sigh of relief there if you're, if you're Team Europe. <laughs> if you're Lynn Grant. Yeah. <laughs> so the Americans, three up after that very, very good start. But it's going to be a tough task for Kang and Thompson. Grant and Stark know each other very, very well from their non-paid days playing team golf together to four. Just a moment ago, Danielle Kang for birdie. Europe will have a putt to tie this match. It'll be Celine Boutier for birdie in a moment. <laughs> to three. This is Cheyenne Knight on the tee. Leaning like it's going right. We've seen a few miss on that low side and there's nothing to keep it there on the green it's going to roll down into probably the thicker rough there and as we know it's not an easy shot now we've seen players really struggle from down there all right at the fourth boutier for birdie to tie the match and this for their first win of this morning sliding right oh <laughs> andrea lee's not in yet for par We'll see if that's conceded. Not yet. <laughs> ah. Match play. You got to love it. Par putts coming up at four. Ewing and Knight, one up in the final match. Allison Corpus put Nelly Corda in the fairway at four. Here's Nelly's second. Just as you expect, Nelly really strong with her approach shots on par fives. Great with the three wood. An eagle putt coming up from Megan. Three. This is the Europeans from the bunker, Charlie Hull. Remember, the Americans missed the green, so it was a poor tee shot from Emily Pedersen, knowing she needed to find the green to uh, have the advantage. And Charlie just trying to stretch out the back there. Our first match is at the sixth, and Megan Kang. Be a bit slippery. It's going to be quick from up that side, and she's in that Bermuda grass. We'll see. Three again. Ella Ewing technically to win the hole here. She can chip it in, but it's been a tough place. Sit down. <laughs> Players to play. Yes, yeah, they really struggle from down there, Karen. Yeah, I mean one one obviously below the green surface, but the grass and the grain is going to is all growing into you, and it's not the, the close cut one. It's 
long grown grass grown into you. The U.S. has missed the green at six. Here's Maya Stark. And that's hit it right as well. There is a hill Whoa! where you can get a little bounce to the left towards the green. And we got a chipping contest over there. I think slight advantage European with regards the chip only because it's not in the rough. And less bunker to contend with or slope from the bunker. I misspoke earlier. It won't be Megan Kang, obviously, for Eagle. It'll be Alison Corpuz playing with Nelly Corda. Yona McGuire is going to have a third shot, teaming up with Anna Nordquist. <laughs> a lot of Irish fans down here, Tom and Karen. This is a place that folks from the UK and Ireland mm -hmm. frequent. Right, but a lot of people live here. Yeah, so they they decide that the weather isn't great in in Ireland, <laughs> yes. the UK, and Scandinavia, and it might be a little nicer to live down here. <laughs> oh, yes, no matter where you're from. She's got her whole family here this week: parents, sister Lisa, and brother Orlin. Third shot at the par five. Just what the European team got to order right there. This is the only match that's tied at the moment. It's a part about to win the hole for the US. You can see the uh, bogey putt there. You can see the marker on the right side of for Europe. Charlie will have that putt if this one misses, which it does. So Europe will have a putt there to halve the hole. At the par three. Third has um, caused players some trouble in these foursomes matches as we go back over to four. Yes. And with Europe in there close for birdie, it's going to be Alison Corpuz putting for Eagle. Karen, there are five rookies for the Americans, but a couple of them have won major championships this year, including Alison Corpuz. It's not your ordinary group of rookies, is it? No, and Alice Hawkwell Poos won the US Women's Open too, and that's, you know, probably the biggest stage uh, individually as, as, a, as a female golfer uh, that you could win. So she understands the pressure. She, she knows what it's all about. And, you know, having to uh, put a good lag putt down is part of, part of winning major championships. So slightly different. No, whatever you leave, your partner has to clean up for you. Mm. So that's a different kind of pressure. Lily Vu has won a couple of majors this year. She's sitting this morning along with Jennifer Cupcho, Angel Yen, and Rose Zhang for the U.S. the caps of the American team as a tip of the cap to Kathy Whitworth in her record LPGA win total <laughs> Kathy died last December the first captain for the US Solheim Cup team and one of the all time greats in the sport to three hey, Charlie Hull to uh, tie the hole here at the third. So the American pair won the second and they have the third. So the U.S. still one up. And the U.S. really uh, in a good position right now in the early stages of this uh, Solheim Cup, the opening morning foursomes. This is Anna Nordquist for birdie. To put the pressure on Nelly Corda to answer.
literally, it's like every every hole that we've tuned in on, we've seen parts missed. Um, I mean, Charlie Hull missed one like that. Mm. We've seen Celine, uh, Georgia Hall miss one like that. Celine Boudier. There's been a lot on the European side that have, have missed those shortish putts. Um, I, I do think it comes down to comfort level of being on Bermuda greens. Some par putts here at six. First, Megan Kang. Or Stark and Grant to win a hole. So Nelly Corda at the fourth. This for Birdie to win the hole and give the Americans a lead in all four matches. Yes. So the opening tee shot for Nelly found the water at one. But it's now one up leads for the U.S. in the last three matches and a three-up lead at the moment in the first match. You don't see a lot of red on the board in first sessions for the U.S. That's the case today. Maya Stark for par to win the hole at six. That's the first proper European roar that you'll hear and I think for the European team that's going to be important to hear those kind of roars because you know there's been a lot of USA USA chance yeah. there's been a lot of silence and that's uh, that's not what the European team wants but USA crushing it right now and so it's a two-up lead now for Thompson and Kang Stark and Grant win the sixth the U.S. leads in all four matches. Now that grandstand you see in the bottom right was packed and it was rocking this morning when the first match teed off at 10 after 8 local time. Now we are an hour and a half into session number one. Take you to the fifth. And an awkward on the tee. As you saw earlier, this hole does not require a driver. You've got that tree there in the fairway. This one down the right, needing a bit of luck. A couple of bunkers she's got to go over. Oh. Uh, there is some room there, it, it, but not that much room. So she will need a kick. Yeah, it's, it's going to be hard to kick out of that kind of jungle, yeah. though. Yeah. In the... Boutier with two putts to win the hole. The Americans had some problems out that right side. K as well. They did. They um, hit it into the right trees. It had to take an unplayable. The best they can make is a bogey. And looks like Europe's going to get their first win. And this match will go back to all square. The American pair won the opening hole. Danielle Kang made a good birdie putt at the first to give them a one-up lead, which they've maintained through four holes, but it's now back to tied. Kang's maybe the only birdie putt of any length or any putt Absolutely. that we've seen made today it's outside three or four feet. Putting has been very hard for these players today. Let's go to the tee at the seventh. Top par four. This is Lynn Grant on the tee. Severely sloped fairway left to right. The wind is also left to right, so you're going to have to take it almost over this fairway bunker and get the kick. And she's starting that well to the left. She has a four, but again, that's the side to miss it. It can roll down to the fairway. It's going to be perfect right yeah. in the middle of the fairway. As long as you get it over those bunker, well, the bunker on the left. I take that back, right side of the fairway, <laughs> as it continues on. We might hear that a few times this week, John. There are some really severe slopes out here. It's a very, very tough walk for the spectators. So as we get into the back nine here, you may not see as many people uh, as you did around the first, but then we'll pick them back up once we get to the area of the 16th and the 17th holes. But it is a really, really good walk. John, yes. are you walking it or are you riding it? I am walking. I'm a true professional. Right. You know that. 36 <laughs> holes walking. I know you have some commiseration, John, with your 
caddy brethren this week. Yeah, I, I feel for them. But, uh, you know, in these things, you get so much adrenaline going. You don't feel it until Monday after it's all over, to be honest with you. It's, it's, it's a haul, but uh, you're so intent on what you're doing, the job, that uh, you don't really think about it. So see if you can the same shot here up that left side. One interesting thing, sometimes in foursomes, in alternate shot, you'll see some of the players and caddies cutting off, taking shortcuts to minimize the walk a little bit, but you haven't seen any of that. They've been walking together. This is up the left side as well. She likes it. Quick tee pick up. Yeah, the tradition, this will run back down as well. The tradition, uh, certainly where they play foursomes in the UK, is that you walk on. So it's quite good for uh, spotting where the ball goes as well, if your partner's you know, a little bit wide with the tee shot. <laughs> so the Americans up in three matches here, morning foursome at the Solheim Cup in Spain for the first time. It's a one-up lead for Allie Ewing and Cheyenne Knight, and this was a moment ago Ewing for Eagle to win the hole. It was a beautiful putt that almost dropped, so a tap-in birdie. So that was uh, an eagle putt, and now an eagle putt to win the hole for Charlie Hall. That likely won't be conceded, so... That'll be a putt to tie coming up for Emily Pedersen. Here's Georgia Hall on the tee at six. The wind is hurting out of the left. Georgia trying to land this five iron 170 yards. How good was that? That's exactly what they're looking for. The European team need a little bit of blue on the leaderboard. They will at least take the red away. Seven. Second for Megan Kang. From 170, the wind has really picked up. Oh, that's an excellent shot from that far back into the wind. We met with Davide Lantos, one of the rules officials of the Ladies European Tour, who's the tournament director here, and he was telling us the big question mark is how strong the wind is going to be this week. Oh, and a three-putt par for Europe. And it's going to be a two-up lead for Ali Ewing and Cheyenne Knight. We've seen so much of that. I mean, the Europeans just haven't made the putts. I mean, they're going to have to do some work in, the, in that department. Maya Starks, second shot here for Europe. From 155, trying to keep that little bit of momentum they've got going off that last hole win. Back up the hill, wind left to right and into her. Starting left, and actually this is turning Cut. over. It's not cutting at all. Swale there on the left can get lucky and get a bounce down, but not if you pitch it where she did. And we'll go back over to number six. Good crowds out this morning, and a uh, bit tense among the European faithful as the Americans lead in three matches. Daniel Kang has this for birdie. Andrea Lee had a quality hybrid to this point, whole high right. Down the door is open for Celine Boutier. To give Europe the lead in this match. I mean, Karen, that was just a, a, a really good moment for Andrea Lee to step up there and hit such a good tee shot with a hybrid after Europe had put it in so close. But now a chance for Europe to win two holes in a row. You kind of had to expect it, though, from, from this team of Celine Boudier and Georgia Hall. No panic between yeah. these two. They're so supremely confident in each other. And uh, they know it's a long 18 holes. This putt will move down to the left.
So the sixth has been good to the Europeans. They have won that hole in each of the first two matches as we take you up to the seventh. Lynn Grant's got the wedge out here for a third shot. Tough little pitch, very grainy down there, that Bermuda. She's trying to point out a spot about 10 feet onto the green. Once it's there, it's going to be very fast and moving to her right. I love the way she plays that. Fabulous technique. Like she, she took all of the grain out of the equation by picking it so cleanly. Uh, didn't let the club have any chance to dig into that grass. Countries represented for the European team. Denmark for the pick, Emily Pedersen. Celine Boutier, what a year it's been for France. Celine winning a major on French soil. Leona Maguire from Ireland. Gemma Driver. Presenting Scotland this week, not playing in the foursomes. Colors Seganda on home soil, also not playing in this uh, foursomes session. The two English women who are good friends, Charlie Hull and Georgia Hall. And then Sweden, just a powerhouse of uh, women's golf. Five players from Sweden here this week. And there are a lot of Swedes uh, in the gallery here. They are just so excited to uh, come out and watch their country women compete for the continent. Putt to win the hole here for Lexi. Very fast putt, probably moving a hair to her left. If this gets to the hole, especially with the Europeans with a lot of left work for par, I would expect it to just be crawling to the hole here. If it happens to get there, great. If not, leave yourself a tap in because it's definitely got some speed to it. Disappointed not to make it, but as you say, John, you've got to be very careful with a putt like that. Yeah, she hit that like it was a two and a half footer. The Europeans have given themselves work, so it's okay. You can let them work for it. Second shot here for the Americans at the fifth. You remember Anna Norquist drove it right into the trees? Well, they had to take an unplayable, so. Maguire did not hit a good shot with uh, the third for Europe. So the Americans very much in control here. And we're just missing. This hole proving to be quite difficult and a hole that, when you look at it, Karen, it really shouldn't be. Just lay it up off the tee. That's really all you've got to do. It's just a short hole. You don't have to play up the hill and let it kick down. It won't roll out of room on the left. Yeah, it's, I guess they're thinking about not being blocked out by that tree. Yeah. But still, if you lay it back it, it shouldn't be a problem nope. interesting until you get out there you don't really know how the holes are going to play but that surprised me in the early going but to uh, tie the hole here for Europe at the seventh John well most likely the US has not been conceded theirs yet and it's a solid two and a half feet but most likely this is a tie the hole up the hill moving to her left slightly but the Americans by no means is, do they have a gimme left That went in with a bit of speed. I thought it was going to jump out at the end. <laughs> so she likes to putt those aggressively. Megan Kang, as John said, still has a putt for the par, which we would expect her to make. <laughs> well, that's not exactly what the Americans want to see. These two feeling a bit more relaxed and yep. kind of letting it flow which is what I think they will need to do. The fifth hole, the Europeans have conceded there's all sorts of trouble down the right with the trees, so they're going to make the walk over to the sixth. And it's now a two-up lead. So we've seen some matches flip. Boutier Hall were one down, now they're one up. Corda Corpus were one down, now they're two up. Seven. Short putt here just to tie the hole for Megan Kang. No problem at all. Beautiful 
clubhouse here at uh, Finca Cortes Inn. They've got a great hotel as well, which is uh, where all the players and caddies are staying this week, right on site. Makes things a lot easier. So the Americans with the advantage, up by two in three matches so far. A little pep in the step for the Swedes as they tee it up at eight. Maya Stark. Dog leg right. Oh, and she does not like this one at all. Oh, careful here. Oh, boy. That may take out some of the pep. Now Megan Kang. Probably does not know where the European ball ended up, so just wants to get something in play there either way. So it's a two-up lead for Thompson and Kang. As we take you to the sixth and Leona McGuire. Oh. Allison Corpuz has found the green as well. Just uh, making sure that picture stuck, Tom, that you were talking about. Just double checking. Gotta be careful where you sit there. They might uh, do yourself some damage. <laughs> That's not the Rock of Gibraltar, that, but it's not far away, actually. <laughs> Tee miles. shot for the Americans here at the fifth. This is uh, Ali Ewing's second. Just, you can see why Karen players want to pitch it on the high yeah. side of the hill, but around the greens that doesn't always it's work. Flat. Yeah, and then they and then they roll off down there, and then you end up with a downhill chip that's mm. really fast or or putt, depending on how you want to play it. This is the seventh, the second shot for Europe from the bunker with Georgia Hall. A supremely challenging shot on already one of the hardest holes. Going with a fairway wood, she was trying to decide which wood to hit out of there to ensure clearing the the um, the lip. Went with the more lofted. Had 196 into the wind at the front of the green. You can see the length of the group in front with Thompson and Lynn Grant hitting the tee shots. That bunker wasn't in play. They flew it over that bunker. Now the fifth. This is Charlie Hull with the second shot. Little bit of tree trouble there, having to come over the tree. Missed it right. But you can hear from the gallery they uh, like that shot, so it obviously wasn't mm. very easy. No, a slightly more difficult pitch though, coming up more, more longer grass to carry. We have some pretty putts here at the sixth, and a Nordquist and Nelly Cordo will stroke the putts for their respective teams. That's how it looks here. Session number one. We'll have four balls this afternoon. Terry Gannon, Judy Rankin, Julie Inkster will join the team. It's three straight holes won for Corda and Corpuz. And Nordquist would like to get one to fall here and put some pressure on Nelly. Well, statistically, Nelly makes more putts from around this range than Anna does. Oh, animate that one. Sure did. And really needed it. There's no scenario she hasn't seen in Solheim Cup play, is there? No, and it kind of makes up. Up, she missed a, a little putt further back. So it kind of makes up for that a little bit. And she had that short putt at four that lipped out. So now Nelly is going to have a putt to tie the hole. Look at Barry Caesars back there. Rock, longtime caddy for Morgan Pressel. Another look, yeah. And so now Nelly Corda to tie the hole.
One more look and a Nordquist brings Europe a little bit closer with that birdie putt. They're now one down to Korda and Corpuz. with her third shot. This long par four play more like a par five, 55 yard shot. Well, we saw the trouble that Maya Stark found off the tee at eight. Here's Lexi second. didn't it? It's going to be a fourth shot coming up for the Europeans after Lynn Grant had to take an unplayable lie. That's going to be awkward. I mean, that was there's a lot of grass around that ball. Third for the Americans at the seventh. This is just a moment ago. Daniel Kang. <laughs> Good touch. That might be conceded. Fifth, Emily Pedersen chipped down to here. You can see the American marker on the green. So that's a bogey for Europe. That one's good. The Americans will have a putt to win the hole here. Both teams miss the green on the right, if you remember, at this fifth hole. And we'll go back over to seven. Georgia Hall for the par. This one is for the half. Looks like the American's putt has been conceded. Oh. And that is a win for the US there. Driving in the bunker didn't help on that tough par four for Europe. Back over to number five to win the hole for the US. Ewing, this would be a very comfortable lead for America in that last match out. Ali Ewing and Cheyenne Knight against Hull and Pedersen. Hull and Pedersen have a really good record together. Cheyenne Knight, a rookie, so we've never seen that pairing for the U.S., but um, a really good lead at the moment for Ewing and Knight. Hull and Pedersen with a 2-1 and one overall record in foursomes and four ball. That may change after this morning session. Horses have long been a symbol of pride and cultural heritage in Andalusia. Used for transportation, agriculture, warfare. But here, some of the finest horses in the world train to be performers, showcasing an elegance and harmony as they dance with their rider. Your only partner is the horse. You rely on each other. You have to trust each other. A centuries-old bond. The Royal School of Equestrian Art. And they were on display last night at the opening ceremony. Magnificent. We're at the par 5 eighth and a third shot from Megan Kang. This was a moment ago. We could see the lie, and it was not great. No, a lot of grass around the ball. Very sticky, nasty grass. And a chance for Sweden to escape here. This is Stark's fourth. Yeah. This could be more than escaping. That will, uh, I don't know if it'll be conceded, but it'll be a short putt for par. Now Lexi will have a fourth shot after Maya Stark hit her tee shot into an unplayable area. So here is Lexi's fourth. It's really good, wow. really good. Touch of class there from Lexi. Well, she was hitting it great in uh, in the lead up this week. And Stacey Lewis gave her the chance to go out first. But again, what you're seeing here is a player who 
is used to this type of grass, who has probably been in a similar position before, being able to rely on what she knows. Tough hole this for the uh, European pair. This is Maguire's second up. shot, seventh. Four. Four. Four left. Four left towards the gallery, but it's going to be okay. But you can see for the shorter hitters, Karen, it's, it's a beast. It is 422 yards, but if you don't carry it over, over you know, over the trouble, you can't make the carry over the bunker. You, you're going to be having a long shot in there with the wind direction as well all going against you. Now, Alison Corpus has Nelly Corder's power off the tee, which helps so much here. <laughs> Just needs to settle. There is a swale there, and it might catch it. It's dry. Okay. Nelly is so good around the greens. Yep. Well, it came all the way to the uh, Solheim Cup, and I watched it on, on my phone. <laughs> Captain Suzanne Pedersen, I think, watching from the good, good golf cart. Thompson and Kang won the first three holes of this opening match. Stark and Grant escaped there with a tie. Morgan Pressel, assistant captain and our colleague at Golf Channel, is out there with that opening match. She and Marina Alex were four down through six at Glen Eagles and then won seven of the next nine holes to win the match. Same shot at the seventh court boost. Another look at it. Yeah, and that's the, the land, as you can see, moves left to right. So your eye, Karen, is telling you that everything yep. is going to go left to right. But it then you kick. pitch it on the left, it goes the other way. It doesn't because of the way the contours are designed or it kicks off. This is a par putt for Charlie Hull at six, and that's going to be a birdie putt for the Americans. This could be a four-up lead. It was, it's such a strange way for those two to play it. After what you told us earlier. Exactly. So, so the player who tees off the first has 14 of the first putts. Charlie Hull is statistically a much better putter than Emily, and Emily is a much better ball striker than Charlie statistically. So it should be the other way round is how they should be playing. If you're hitting greens in regulation, that player who tees off on the odd holes would have 14. Yes. Pretty points, wow. And the fact that Emily hits more greens in regulation than Charlie would help give them more opportunities. Cheyenne Knight with a couple of putts here to win the hole and go four up. She's had some opportunities and hit some good putts that didn't go in. And even though you only need two putts, you want to see it go in, don't you? If you're, especially if of you're shy. Well, because it was the, enough. Well, because the unfortunate thing is, but you know, for Cheyenne. Now it becomes, if you're not making those putts, it becomes harder for Stacy to put her in mm. other matches. So, obviously there's a little bit of nerves at play, but you, but you need to play the players that are making the putts. So, if Cheyenne wants to play more, she's going to have to turn this around a little bit, make a few putts, but the team as a whole, doing good. That was Anna Norquist. Good shot there from Anna. Let's go to the ninth hole, and this is Lynn Grant on the tee. To, to a little pot in the center of the fairway, so she's got drive. Going to need to go right that. Yeah, John's Mike just <laughs> cutting out there. But she's taking, there's a bunker in the middle of the fairway. Players go up the right side. There's more room on the right than it looks for the tee. It's tough to tell where that's finished. Now Nelly Corder. Chip this in, it'll be a win for the US. Nelly will be thinking about holding it. The Americans will be just further away than Europe there. But both teams will have putts on par. This is Lexi Thompson now on the tee at the ninth. Taking less than driver to probably leave something short of that. This ball is on the right edge of the fairway. Okay. Good shape there in the fairway. 
ninth hole goes back to the clubhouse in the hotel area, so there'll be uh, good atmosphere up by the green. The US missed the par putt at the seventh, so now the Europeans have a chance to take the match back to all square. And it is Leon Maguire who was so key for Europe two years ago at Inverness in Ohio. The Europeans going for three consecutive victories in the Solheim Cup, which they've never done before. The Americans have done it, but uh, Europe have never done it. The US have done it on a couple of occasions. America are up in two matches right now. Long birdie putt for Danielle Kang at the eighth as Georgia Hall looks on. Georgia left uh, an eagle putt about six feet short. This is a very difficult green to read. It's actually cut to, to putt a little slower because it's so extreme. Looking to see if it's conceded. There's not been a lot conceded today. No. So this will be a birdie putt to regain the lead for Celine Boutier and Georgia Hall. First, we go to the ninth. Yeah, the Europeans first to play. This is Stark. 118, ball well above her feet. Tends to, wants to get the ball to go left. He's got a backstop, but this needs to get down. It's a narrow passage back there, and it has gone a little bit long and could be close to that back. Uh, cut of rough so maybe difficult to get the club into the back of the ball there for Lynn Grant who will play the next shot for Europe all right so Boutier for birdie at the eighth to win the hole I think mentally Grant this is so important because they did hit the par five fourth in two after Boutier hit a beautiful hybrid on it and then proceeded to three putt the hole for par Definitely don't, you know, want to give that. It's like giving a gift to the U.S. This will be a sliding putt from left to right. She got a little bit of a read off of, off of Daniel's birdie attempt. been won by one team or the other. And Boudier Hall from one down. Now back again to one up. You have those matches, don't you, where someone's winning every hole and no one wins all. It just keeps tied. Second shot for Megan Kang now at the ninth. Just 98 yards and a very level lie. She can be aggressive at this one. Fly it down, just right the flag. It's a good looking shot. Yeah, good shot there. That's exactly what she needed to do. He talks about Europe trying to win three in a row. You can see winning in 2021 and 2019. Prior to that, it was the US with a comfortable win in 2017 in Des Moines. And then uh, Germany, that close four contest with controversy. It wasn't without controversy in 2015. The Americans had a little bit of extra fire on that final day. And a big win for Europe in Colorado. And we see Charlie Hull's first outing. The youngest player to play in the Solheim Cup. She is uh, locked in a battle right now, trying to get back into that match. Alongside uh, Emily Pedersen, the Americans flying along four up. It's been an interesting start to uh, the Solheim Cup. I think the Americans were really strong in the early going. The, Amer uh, the Europeans have battled back a little bit. What are your thoughts on the way this golf course has played so far? There's uh, definitely been a little bit of momentum shift, I think. This is Lynn Grant with the putter, John. Yeah, ball just far enough away from that roof where I think she can make good contact. It is downhill, so it's not like she has to rip it. This is really good speed here. And good touch. The Americans will still have a putt to win the hole. 
That's interesting. <laughs> Is that like an ABBA? It looked like some dancing queens there, yeah. yes. <laughs> the Europeans obviously will have far more fans in there gallery but there are a lot of Americans that have come across to watch the Solheim Cup here combining a trip uh, to watch this competition with a little uh, vacation in uh, southern Spain which is great to see par 5 8 up the hill with a second shot for Anna Nordquist It's a really busy start here. These first eight holes, you got three par fives and a drivable par four. You do, and, and, and this just shows you how difficult the terrain is for these players to negotiate, too. I mean, that one I mean, it wouldn't have taken much for it to have ended up in a lot of trouble. And yet it was down the middle. Nine. Lexi with a birdie putt to win the hole. Not much in this. This is a great look, maybe slightly right to left, but really straight at the end. thought that that was going to go in. Don't know if that putt's been conceded. All right, back at the eighth and the second for Nelly Corda. Lots of green to use. You got a long way to go in this Solheim Cup, so settle in, get comfortable. This fella it, has been sitting in that seat for about an hour. I've, I've seen him in my monitor here. He's got lots of friends. Position. <laughs> He's just sitting out there watching it on the big screen. So that's how it looks here as the first match begins to make the turn. Seven. Beg your pardon, this is yeah, the seventh. Second. A little blocked out down the right side. That's a very good shot from where she was. Seven and eight are separated by those bushes. We were told you can't intentionally mm. on the eighth hole play it toward the seventh. It would shorten yep. the par five. So that's an internal out of bounds. We'll watch for that. The forecast is for really gusty winds come Sunday for singles. Seven. Charlie Hall now second and the seventh. That must have been a misstrike there, Karen. Yeah. It certainly was. They're they're in uh, quite a bit of trouble. Yeah. For that final group, if you're a European, Charlie Hull, Emily Pedersen, they're four down and not showing signs of of anything that's going to turn that around. Uh, Cheyenne and Ali are playing really solid golf. I think Ali is really playing very nicely across the board. This is the eighth. And with the American duo of Nelly Corda and Alison Corpus off the back of the green, We've got a third shot coming up for Leona McGuire. And Leona's up there just taking it all out, but obviously trying to figure out a way to to get close to that hole without necessarily having to go over the bunker mm. and that, that runs the risk of the Bermuda grass and it, you know, coming out a little heavier. And we've seen a lot of players come up short from that Bermuda grass. Allison grew up in Hawaii, played collegiately at USC, and now a major champ. And won at Pebble Beach, the U.S. Women's Open. It looks awkward too. I mean, she's on an upslope, but the ball is below her feet. You can't see the green surface. 
she'll have a lot of green to work with, that's for sure. It looks all the world like Leona would be away, and yet, uh, of course, in match play, whoever is farthest away from the hole must play first. So they will have taken a look. How did you see Leona evolve as a player over the course of that week at Inverness? Well, I think she went into it being a little nervous of, you know, the bit. it was an intimidating team room, players that have been there for many years. Mel Reed. Yes, and uh, she really found her footing in there. And so, but so much of it is done by earning respect, and she definitely did that. Well, that was clearly not an easy shot. She gave her partner, Anna Nordquist, at least a putt for birdie. Anna made a long one back at six. We'll check in there in a moment for Corpuz's pitch, but first and nine. Charlie Hull with, excuse me, Georgia Hall with the second. It's quite a narrow little gap in that area of that green there. Camera makes it look a little bigger than it is. Good shot. Look down at the eighth. And now the third at this par five for Alison Corpuz. How comfortable might she be on this grass growing up in Hawaii? I think this grass is probably more like Hawaii grass than, than most other places. It's particularly tight and dense, very grainy, and I think that she would be very accustomed to this. Andrea Lee now, second shot. Tempo there. Yeah, good shot. So an advantage for the U.S. Trying to take this match back to all square. The Americans did lead early. They won the first hole. At the seventh, Cheyenne Knight to go five up through seven. Pretty good speed on that. Mm -hmm. Charlie Hull will have a putt to avoid going five down. Let's go to the 10th. And this was a moment ago, the downhill par three, Maya Stark. So difficult to get this club right, so severely downhill with some wind. This is on a really good line. We'll see what kind of distance she's got. Perfect distance. Pretty good aim as well. This is about 20 down, right? Yep, nice little club 12 there. She knew it. Stacy Lewis out with that first match. Seven again. Charlie with that putt I mentioned to tie the hole. Yeah, still four down. We've got a lot of work to do this pair if they're going to get back into the match. As you mentioned, uh, Karen, Ali Ewing looks very, very solid. Yep. I mean, and she's coming in in form. They're bringing form into it. That's that's tough. Good form for Megan Kang coming in, and after a good tee shot from Stark, here's Megan. This is on a fantastic line here. Let's see what kind of answer she gives. Oh, is that any good? How good are those two shots? Lexi loves it. It's a two-up lead for Lexi and Megan Kang, the junior Solheim Cup team. Hoping that uh, their senior counterparts have a little better success this week. And it has been a good start for the Americans. They lead in two of the four matches. Back out at the ninth here, and Danielle Kang seems to win the hole, take it back to all square. Yeah, baby. Yeah, good putt. 
And a good battle between uh, these four players, Andrea Lee and Danielle Kang playing together alongside Cillian Boutier and Georgia Hall. They will make the walk down to the 10th, quite a steep walk down to the 10th tee. And a steep walk down to the 10th green and a birdie for Lynn Grant after Maya Stark's brilliant tee shot. And that'll put the pressure on Lexi Thompson to answer from about three feet. No problem. How about that at the 10th? That was particularly impressive. I mean, a 10th hole's not, not an easy golf hole. Okay. There's Morgan Pressel, our colleague out with that first match. Morgan, an awfully good foursomes player in her own right. Right, we saw that pitch from Allison Corpuz, a really good one, but Nelly missed the birdie putt, and now this is the comebacker for par for Allison. To the ninth. And an odd Chris. On the tees, we just saw quite a lot of room up the right side. It looks like it's okay. You're going to avoid the bunker that's in the middle of the fairway. It's about 255 to get to today. Little, probably a little hurt in it, uh, right to left. Here's Nelly. Yeah, with the driver, you think she'd have to drive it right of that bunker. Yeah, it comes into play for Nelly, so it's an aggressive tee shot there. Is there a bathroom anywhere? Right, I think at the turn. Rocco, nearest restroom? Nearest player restroom? You've always got to know where the bathrooms are. Yeah. Okay. It's important. Okay. I'm going to be going by the clubhouse up there, so make a pit stop. And we'll go to the 10th. And the tee shot for Andrea Lee. So in many respects, I mean, this, this, obviously this hole plays a lot downhill. It's quite tricky to get the clubbing right. But the players are kind of used to holes that have big drops. You think about the Evian Championship, um, the Amundi Evian Championship. There's the second hole there that has the big drop off. Pretty similar to that. Not quite as far down as Evian is, but still similar kind of deal. So the other way that's really awkward, right? Get going up here. Going, yeah. Yes. Comes in very flat, can't get the ball to stop. That was a great look from high above. And now, Georgia Hall. <laughs> this has been a really good battle. The last five holes have been won by one team or the other, and they'll have birdie putts coming up at the 10th. <laughs> Second at the ninth for Europe, Leona Maguire. Americans still to play, they've driven it further up the hole. Watching the club, which she didn't like it, but she loves it. <laughs> I mean, the pressure really was on the owner because she's about I mean, going in with a shot that's 30 yards longer than what Corpus will have. Three major winners in this group. A winner on the LPGA Tour, but not a major champion. The other three are all major winners. Huge drive by Nelly, and there are some risk-reward holes out here. This one 
has an element of that with the bunker in the middle of the fairway. Well, looking where, she, where she's driven, I mean, she doesn't have much more than 70 yards in from here. First time coming to Spain for Corpus. What an experience it's been so far. Just to silence the uh, crowd there behind the green with a good one. Just outside the mark of Europe, and shows you how good Leona Maguire's second shot was from much further back. We thought this would be the case at the ninth. A lot of people walked down to the green, uh, to the tee at the first, and it's a relatively short walk, although it's straight uphill, to come back to the ninth. Well, this is not great. This is at the eighth, and out comes Charlie Hall from where her tee shot came to rest. Those are the bushes to the right of the fairway and even the cart path. So at the 10th, this is Celine Boutier for birdie. And careful here. Wow, that got away from her. You talked about it. There are some places you can get, yep. especially above the holes here at Finca Cortesi. You're really playing defense, aren't you? Mm, very much so. But there was nothing defensive about that. She was going for it. Megan Kang, second at the 11th. 131. Got to be long to the left here. You got big slopes to bring the ball back to the hole. This is needs to go. Just try it onto that three. Danielle Kang has another putt to win a hole. Oh. Made good ones at one and nine. Danielle did. And so a par putt coming up for Georgia Hall. Maya Stark second. Similar shot, much closer. Starting to the left, trying to use that slope. This one looks like it needs to go as well. There's some wind up there. I don't know what these guys are feeling. And that one could be awkward if it's just above the level of the green there. Just looking back at the ninth. You can see that beautiful hotel complex, a few restaurants here. And this was a moment to go on the same hole. Nelly for the birdie. Yeah. Yeah. And that drops. The Europeans still have a putt to tie the hole, remember, but now the pressure is on for Norquist. It's going to make this for the birdie. with so much experience and really a team leader for Europe an assistant captain as well as a player this is the 10th and this is the comebacker for Europe Hall oh my two three putts Karen well and you, you just I mean that's, you just can't do that in, in foursomes I mean you, I mean Celine so experienced and that was just an error that you can't make mm. So again, it's going to be a sixth consecutive hole one in that match. And Kang and Lee go one up again. Eighth Soheim Cup for Norquist. That is a big miss. So well, good I mean, birdie for America. Absolutely. And so far, you know, in, the, in this early going, you know, the leaderboard is, is looking very American. And I think we can say it's down to the putting. And from the European side, they haven't got the putts in the, that you would expect them to make. Alexi's going to go with the putter from just off the green at 11. Yeah, a lot of that fairway cut to go through, but I like this play. If you're not confident at all, you can really grab a wedge. This has got some steam on it, though.
a good performance so far from Kang and Thompson out in the first foursomes match. Four balls this afternoon to be the same tomorrow. Foursomes in the morning, four balls in the afternoon, and then the 12 singles on Sunday. We'll get to four ball matches here not too long from now. Uh, we'll find out what the, the lineup will be. Unless you've got the inside track. With the U.S. leading in all four matches now, because Kang and Lee have won the tenth, so the U.S. has won two foursome sessions since 2009. Two, mm -hmm. um, and yet here they are, off to a great start. But there's a lot of golf to be played. Well, there is, but I also think that Stacy has, you know, based a lot of her pairings on statistics and who pairs well. And when you think about foursomes, you have the opportunity to create the perfect player. Somebody who excels at putting, somebody who excels long game, pair them together. You should have a better version of the one. Lindgren is going to chip this one at the 11th. Yeah, it's got a bit of a miniature golf feel to it if you putt it. It's just straight down the hill. I don't know how quickly you could stop it. So she's going to try and just really get right underneath this little spin, maybe land it just on the green, take that huge hill out of play. You gotta catch this exactly right. Yeah. Quite take it all out of play, but she's gonna be closer than the American pair. The same Laura Davis and Suzanne Pedersen. You talked about making the decisions about the four ball pairings. That's something they're gonna have to do here pretty quickly. And so this is a fifth shot for Emily Pedersen after Charlie Hall's tee shot went right into the bushes and they're already four down. I mean, there's still holes to play. It's going to be such an uphill battle. A couple of par putts to come at the 11th. I always think, John, this green is so hard to read because it's like an optical illusion that the green looks like it goes against the way the hill is situated. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I'm sitting here at the back of the green, and when you're back in the fairway, it actually looks like it runs away from you. And then you get up to the here, and it looks like kind of more, more left to right. And like you said, it's a very deceptive hill. This is one where the players would have made notes in the practice rounds. If you don't know what a green does you've got a few days here four days they've been here practicing you should know by the time you get out there but when you first look at it it really fools you yeah i don't know if, if danielle hit that shot as solidly as she wanted to if she did it was kind of almost a strategic error with so much room behind that hole and especially with the ridges left and long you definitely want to miss it back there and bring it back both both uh, europe and the united states came up short there but much tougher putt here straight up the hill. Didn't hit it, did she? No. Oh, it was right on line as well. So it could be a little momentum swing here. The putt goes in for the U.S. and the chance to go three up they miss and might be only one up heading to the next tee back to eight and a third for Ali Ewing not far from where Leona McGuire was earlier you see she too looking a little bit out to the right as well but again the situation for Europe is dire yep brilliant shot from Ewing they're lying five this is going to be a birdie putt absolutely the Americans to go five up Allie was part of a massive victory at Glen Eagles in her first Solheim Cup. Last time it was in Europe. Well, here we go with a chance here for the Swedes. Yes, it's at the 11th, Maya Stark. Looks like just a touch of left to right in it, but boy, Tom, she's looking to damage the back of the cup here, the way she likes to hit these putts. Yeah. 
And a good putt. And it is only a one-up lead for the U.S. in that first match out. And Captain Pedersen, the 42-year-old, in charge for the first time, really needing that momentum charge from the Swedish pair. Well, the Swedish rookies lost the first three holes to Megan Kang and Lexi Thompson, but Suzanne Pedersen knows you just keep fighting. And now Maya Stark and Lynn Grant are just one back. She was five down with five to play against Michelle Redmond back at Interlochen in 2002 and came back and found a way to get a half a point. This was at the eighth, and Charlie Hull, who began the debacle at this par five by finding the bushes off the tee, says, forget it, pick it up. It's a five up lead. So Karen, let's take a look. All red, yes. Yep. But a little glimmer in the, in match one, perhaps. Well, I think if uh, if that top match for Europe can turn that around, get it back to a neutral color at least, I think that gives everybody else a little bit of hope. Uh, if you're on the European side, if, if you're Stacey Lewis and you're you're an American, this is mm. fabulous in a format that you typically don't get off to the best of starts in. This is this is as good as it gets if you're Stacey Lewis. What we say two foursome sessions that the Americans have won since 2009. They just don't win this format very often. But they are winning all four matches at the moment. Let's see if Stark and Grant can keep the momentum going at the par 3 12th. Seven iron for Stark, just left of the flag stick. Right, these two were terrific at the 10th. Both hit it tight. Let's see if Megan can answer as she did a couple of holes ago. Other oh, most pressure this twosome has faced all day. Abbreviated finish. Mm -hmm. There is a chance that Europe could tie this match. 11. Second shot here for Andrea Lee. What a shot. That is really good. From what we just saw in the match ahead, coming up short. Yep. Got that one spot on. And short and right in the bunker from Allison Corpus. So here's Corda's bunker shot. You always reach for the coin, don't you? Just. <laughs> she's going to look over. Don't want to assume anything. So now live, this is Nordquist, their trademark putter from off the green. Incredibly speedy. Very nice. So Corpus did put a coin down. Let's see. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, go good, on good. Go ahead. Let's go. Like a bit of a stare off. For it a was. There. <laughs> Opening session Inverness. Leona Maguire, rookie with the veteran Mel Reed. They beat the Corda sisters in foursomes. And it almost was like a shot across the bow. Mm -hmm. And it would lead to Leona going 4 0 and 1. And leading Europe to a 15 13 victory. How about the bunker shot for Lexi at 12? Good line. Green running away from him. The sand is as good a sand as I've ever seen anywhere. It's kind of packed, but you can still get underneath it and control the ball. Spectacular. How about the way Lexi's played overall today? For I folks think just joining us. Well, I mean, I think she's played very solidly. Um, she's done her job. She's done what she's needed to do. Um, and it started off with the first tee shot. Aggressive, going for the tee shot. Third for Boutier at 11. Going for a flop shot off a tight line. What a shot that was, Kay. That was incredible touch and confidence right there. That's just so hard to do. That one's been conceded, but uh, 
Yeah, but Andrea Lee had a very good second shot in there, so the Americans will have a chance to go two up in that second match out. We'll go back to the 10th. The uh, 12th, actually, 12th. and this is Lynn Grant with a putt to bring her team all the way back from a three down deficit after three holes. And this is just going up the hill a little bit to her right. And this would light this huge crowd up. There's kind of two holes that the crowd, the crowd is surrounding. They can see this putt, so they know exactly what it means. There's some serious swagger with these two, isn't there? There is. They know each other so well. I mean, they, they have known for a long time that they wanted to play together. They won a tournament in the UK called the Sunningdale Foursomes. And uh, that's a big foursomes competition, so they've got a point to prove. Danielle Kang to win the hole. A little break to the left. Oh. She was trying to ram it How straight that, in with that speed. How did that miss? Well, that's what I'm saying. The screen oh. is so hard to read. Whoa. And that's not been conceded. No, the Europeans' par putt was conceded, so... <laughs> How strangely things change. All right, this is Megan Kang to tie the hole. <laughs> Megan got her first career LPGA title in Canada last month and she stared down Lynn Grant head-to-head -head in Saturday's third round. It gave us a little Soul Live Cup sneak preview and here they are matched up together in match number one, session number one of this 18th Solheim Cup for the first time being contested in Spain. Back at the ninth, this is the third shot for Europe. Remember, they are five down. Oh, my word, that was not a time to duff one. Well, the largest margin of victory in foursomes in the Solheim Cup is six and five, which has happened five times, most recently in 2019. Let's go to 12. And Andrea Lee. She did make that comebacker for par on the 11th, so they remain one up. In a match that has flipped a couple of times. 13. This is another sh hole we have to think about the tee shot. Lexi on the tee. Less than driver for Lexi. I think Grant has already played her tee shot to the left center of the fairway. No oh, mistake to miss the fairway with an iron there for Lexi. Baranka <laughs> that runs through the 13th holes of the layback of that. Well, you always know where the cameras are. Yeah, you've got to know this where the cameras are, really. And you've your, got to, It's your move. Yeah, well, yes, yes, absolutely. <laughs> but um, you, you know, you can't be, you can't be looking at the screen. You've got to look at the camera. That's, you know, that's the <laughs> mistake that these fans always make. Make sure you're looking at the camera if you get on the big screen. It's like when you look at your phone for a selfie instead of looking at the lens. You know. Yeah. This is at the 11th. This is going to be a third shot here for Leona Maguire. There's a penalty area all the way down the right side. This hole plays as a par five usually, but they've moved the tee up to play it as a par four. So it's, a, it's quite an odd hole, this, I have to say, with the way it plays. It kind of snakes around the rock there that you can see in the background. But the way that the Solheim Cup is playing, they play it as a par four, so they play it over that par but still a big drop from left to right. Yeah. 
Collins are in the fairway and they have a, oh. a shot coming up. So that could be a four for Europe. Be a wonderful up and down. And uh, maybe a bit of uh, info being handed yes. to Maguire who, about who, who she's you're gonna playing play with, with next. Or maybe you're not playing. Yep, either way. But the way that Maguire sits some of these shots, you think she'll be a part of the four balls. I, I don't think how you could leave her out. Yeah. She played all five at Inverness. Mm -hmm. This is the ninth hole. It's a bogey putt here, trying to move. So it's going to be a double bogey. Six down, they're going to be at the turn. The quarter sisters beat Seganda and Bronte Law back in 2019. Six and five, that was the last of those five. Six and five margins in the Solheim Cup. It's going to be a monumental task here for the final pair for Europe. But a it's be a terrific four if Norquist can make this at the 11th. We talked about it, Karen, the lack of putts made by the Europeans so far. It's, it's very telling. Um, you can't win matches unless you're making, making putts. And they just look like they're forcing, they're trying to force them all. They're not, there's no real patient putts going on. They're not like letting them drip in the hole. They're all like banging them. And they're, and they're hitting them on the high side because they're just taking all the break out of it. Two putts to win the hole for the US. Would take Corda and Corpus two up through 11. They were down in the match early. Remember Nelly Corda, if you weren't with us earlier, that one does need to go in. Nelly Corda went for the green at the first and hit it into the water, and so that was a loss. But since then, the Americans have battled back and are now two up through 11 holes, making their way over to that par three. 12th. So Tom, every match has played at least nine. The Europeans have led four total holes in these four matches. Well, that might help. So Celine Boutier and Georgia Hall take some red off the board with a birdie two. That has been a match that has had more holes won than tied, and they're back to being tied. So if you're Suzanne, Karen, you're saying just just flip a couple of these, right? Yep. I mean, best case scenario, I think you're looking at maybe hoping to to split the session. Um, you just got to try and get as many back as you possibly can. Can't give up on Maguire and Norquist. There's still potential there, and it looks like Grant and Stark. Are Doing okay. Let's check in with him. 13. Yeah, this is Lexi for a birdie. Long putt from the back of the green. Really picks up speed about 12 feet from the hole. Straight downhill from there. It's like a very important two putt here. Europe has a beautiful 15 footer up the hill. <clears throat> yeah, it's just in that little swale there of the green. Subtle. There aren't too many big swales and ridges and tiers in these greens, but. Because of the terrain here, they're not exactly easy putting services. Boy, and what really, really galls you I mean, when you're playing these matches, when you get a three up lead early, you want more than anything to make the other team beat you. And uh, they're just, they've given away holes to make this match close. Allie Ewing on the tee at 10. She's got a chance to put herself again in the Solheim Cup record books for margin of victory. She and Angel Yen are tied for the largest four ball win, seven and five at Glen Eagles. Karen, this has been a tour de force. Hall and Pedersen have helped, but yep. Ewing and Knight have played very solidly. Well, and, and that's that's the trouble is that, you know, left to right, nine Ewing and Knight have just kept applying the pressure, steady, and making no mistakes. Lynn Grant with a putt to win the hole here. Terrific lead, like I said, underneath the hole, putting back up the hill. Americans by no means in yet with their par, but this is up the hill, and it was one I, it's one I would still expect her to be pretty aggressive with. Mm. 
<coughs> just a little adjustment there, and, and ultimately, you want to make this because you, you just don't want to give the Americans a chance to, to tie it. Chance to tie the match for the first time since they stood on the first tee. Look very good. So it is all square in that first match out, and that might be the momentum that the Europeans need to uh, turn things around in this session once they see the change in the fight back from the Swedish pair. They were looking in dire straits in the early part of this match. Speaking of dire straits, six down at the turn. Charlie on the tee at 10. summer it's been for Charlie so many close calls including the last event in Cincinnati lost a playoff to Minji Lee a couple of red yeah, has been taken off the board <laughs> Emily Pedersen at the 10th after the Americans already missed their birdie putt for their first hole one today Just stay alive, right, Karen? Just hang in there as long as you can. As long as you possibly can, because as long as you're still out there playing, there's always hope. So the Europeans have only led four holes today, and yet there is a glimmer of hope with two of the American leads having been erased and back to being tied. Megan Kang and Lexi Thompson won the first three holes against Lynn Grant and Maya Stark. But wins in two of the last three holes for the Swedes have brought them into a tie. Right at the 12th, got a par putt for Europe, but first a birdie putt for Nelly Korda with Allison Corpus and Nelly two up. Oh. Ooh. Again, how does that stay out? Tremendous roll. Looked good all the way. It's yeah. been conceded, so maybe three and a half, four feet coming up for Leona McGuire to 13. This is Andrea Lee's second shot. She had the rules official come in and take a look. So there's obviously something there that she didn't like. It might be that she thought it was embedded there because it looked like it was well down in the grass it was really sitting down yeah. looked pretty awkward actually we got it over the little branca those uh, trees that surround the green the wild olive trees that uh, you find around the 13th it frames it very very well and there is a buzz out there now with the Europeans Taking some of the red off the board. And for Leona McGuire, this putt for par to tie the hole with Corpus and Corda and stay two down. If she misses, they're three down with six to play. She was so clutch at Inverness. That kind of length putt. You know, every every chance uh, she had with the putter, she took it. Europe was so clutch down the stretch at Inverness. They won the opening session three and a half to a half, but a lot of that came late. And they're hoping for another late rally here. Europe in a much better position off the tee at 13. Georgia Hall going straight at it, and that is below the hole. And in a good spot, not far away from Lynn Grant's uh, putt that we saw just a little earlier. And this match all square through 12 holes is a good battle. There's never been more than one hole in it. And the 
US have never swept a foursomes session in the Solheim Cup. The uh, Europeans have only done it once, it was in 2000. And it is certainly in America's favor right now. This was just a moment ago at the 13th, the US off the green, but Danielle Kang going with the putter. And the good news is she's on the correct level, running down to the hole. Did she make it? She made it! That is some American spirit right there from Danielle Kang, and she has just taken the wind out of the sails of Boutier and Hall, who have a putt for birdie. And that is now a putt to tie the hole, and here it is. And a very good putt from Celine Boutier, considering what she's just seen. Karen, it can really knock you for six when you see someone hold a long one. It, it really does, because it's jar it is very jarring, because you think you've kind of won the hole, even though you're not supposed to. That was fabulous there at the 13th. Now we go back to 11. Ali Ewing, who's played so well today. Yeah, and that was a solid shot from the uh, first cut of breath. And she was worried it was going to drift off to the right, Kay, but it found enough of the green. Fourteenth, which is uh, the gorgeous view of the Albornan Sea. That's where we find our lead group. Here's Maya Stark. Up the hill, moving to her right. The Americans are inside them by quite a bit, about 15 foot of their birdie, which will now be to win the hole. What's the vibe out there, John? Uh, a lot of momentum for Europe and very trepidatious for the Americans, it feels like. It's, it almost feels like they've been a little careful. Mm. 11. Second for Charlie Hull. 30 yards ahead from where Team USA hit. Ball below her feet. Yeah, okay. It's on the green. But this European pair just can't afford to lose any holes at this point. The Americans are closer for birdie. At the 14th, a chance to move back in front for the Americans. Megan Kang for birdie. This is a great look, just moving to her right a little bit. And sometimes when you get those big leads, you almost play a little safe. Putts are a little tentative. Let's see if, now that they've gotten back to all square, if she gets aggressive here and just tries to bury this thing with some authority. Such a breaking putt, and, and and it is really hard to, if you've been a bit tentative and you've been a bit cautious, it's really hard to change that mindset in the middle of the round um, to turn it around. So they have to make a, a really big conscious effort, John. If that's what they, that's what the American team feel like they've got to do right now. I would agree with that completely. And this one, uh, Karen, just outside that friend zone, especially late in a tied match. Most definitely. Not much has been given in this top match, has it? No, really at all. Lynn Grant remembered the experience of playing in the Junior Solheim Cup in Des Moines, Iowa, back in 2017. Maya Stark said it was the most nervous she's ever been playing golf, the Junior <laughs> Solheim Cup. And then you get to here. And then you get here. And they're, uh, they are really acquitting themselves admirably as rookies. Maguire's second here at 13. Club twirl, asking for it to go. It's going to be fine right there. To mm -hmm. give Anna an uphill pup. And now for a birdie at the 11th. Slightly up hill putt with not much movement. Steady, steady. 
that'll be conceded. Nice drive from the Americans. Now the second shot for Corpus. Puede venir el coche, puede venir. Far, so she's got to deal with those ridges in the green. Not massive ridges, but they're there. There's something to think about. <laughs> Cheyenne Knight will have a putt here to go six up. I mean, this is kind of like a Kate Cockrell performance in a U.S. women's amateur, the way she's playing, or these Americans are playing today, Kay? Well, the, like you guys said, it takes a combination of... of this USA team playing very solidly and some nice gifts from their opponent. And what they've been able to do today is take a two or three up lead and keep stretching it. And that's what you have to do. You can never feel sorry for your opponent. Americans might offer a good good. Why not when you're five up? Charlie might be uh, saying, how about we go good, good here? This is kind of a signature hole here, Finca Cortis in. And then Grant on the tee at 15. Fairway right there in front of him. It's a very difficult hole though, Karen. It is. It's awkward because you have to figure out how much you want to take off over the corner. And the more you cut off, the shorter your shot is into the green. I think Lynn, I think, feels like she, she kind of left that a little bit out to the right. I think there was more room for her to go a bit more left there. But it's safe. Yeah. Of course, designed by Cabo Robinson, who was American, but has spent a long time in Europe, living down here in Spain. He was responsible for the golf course that we see at Evian, which was tweaked by... Uh, Steve Smyers. They did go good, good at the 11th. So it is five up for the US. With seven to play. Lexi's tee shot across the ridge there, and that one's in good shape. Yeah, a little bit more down the, the left side there for Lexi. So she let, they should, you know, cut off a little bit of distance by doing that and have a flatter lie as well. Nelly for a birdie at 13 down the hill didn't go as much as she thought it gets very tight there with some of the walks between green and T and then from T to fairway at 15 you can see the players kind of slowed down as they walked off yep. that T it, uh, it, it you have to be quite careful as you're walking around here that you don't trip and fall because the slopes are so steep even in carts it can be dangerous this morning when I was driving out to take a look at the golf course <laughs> I I had to go one mile now down the hill at one stage, otherwise the cart with the wet paths was just gonna slide into the uh into the barranca and I would never be seen again, which some of you might have wished no, for, but no, uh, no, no, no. You got me for the next three days. Yeah. You have to really be careful out here. Now, Norquist for Birdie to win the hole. European players make already. I think Anna's just not quite been there with her putting today. She's had a few putts that just missed. Just looks a little bit out of sync. There's a little bit of a timing issue that she looks like she's just trying to give it a little bit more of a hit as opposed to just trusting it and stroking it. Would you play her in the four balls? No, I think I'd rest Anna this afternoon. Given that she is a, a vice captain as well. Corpus making her debut for the Americans in what has been an incredible year. She is the U.S. Women's Open champion, one of Pebble Beach. As the U.S. Women's Open went there for the very first time. It was a great celebration of the women's game, and Allison was solid on that final day. Nasa Hataoka did not play as well as we thought on Sunday by the Pacific, and Allison just came through. It was Charlie Hull that challenged her at the very end, but Charlie was just too far back. 
needed to make an eagle on that last hole to really have any chance. Went for it, but couldn't find the green in two. Talking to some of the players and captains and assistant captains, no one's expected to play five matches no. given the severity of the terrain here, Karen. It's, it's, you, you wish to avoid that at all costs. Um, obviously, I mean, there are some unforeseen circumstances that might, might make you, you know, want somebody to try it, but you know that you're putting that player at a, a distinct disadvantage yeah. in the singles by doing mm. so. Their caddies probably won't argue either. No. They don't play five matches. No. Yeah. Yeah. Well hold. It was really good. USA. Yeah. And the U.S. still two up in this match. Smiles for Alison Corpus. Yeah, girls. That was a little opening, wasn't it? Just a little bit. Just a little smidge that, that Anna couldn't take advantage of. So the U.S. up in two matches and really flying along in that final match. Five up for Ewing and Knight. This was Celine Boutier's second at the par 4 14. Be honest, Ramon, I'm going to come and join you. Maybe the second. Christian. Oh, wow. <laughs> Off the stick. Maybe a little bit unlucky, huh? To 12, and Ali Ewing. Going with a seven iron, Charlie Holt just hit a really solid seven iron, a little short left of the flag. And this one going on a similar line. Okay, that was just a moment ago. So birdie putts coming up for that fourth and final match. Up to the lead match at 15. Megan Kang with the second shot. 172 up the hill. I think this is the toughest second shot on this golf course. That sounded really solid. Here, we've already found the green. You can see the ball there. It was a pretty good shot from Maya Stark. The ball was way above her feet, but that one much better from Kang. Wonderful second. Back at the 12th, and Cheyenne Knight for birdie. Yeah, this putt is going to move from left to right, be a little speedy. She's been dying to get one to drop today, hasn't she? It's just been denied. But then she hasn't actually needed to. You know, if you, you know, sometimes I think if you absolutely have to, it kind of makes you perform a little bit better and as opposed to just being so casual about, you know, about it. All right, this is Georgia Hall for Birdie to win the hole. Oh, look at that go past. So Boutier hit the stick. And now Boutier will have to clean up. Emily Pedersen to win the hole at 12. Well, it's now a five-up lead with six to go. Practice putting is allowed as we watch yep. Allie. There haven't been a lot of ole, ole, olays this morning with Europe having only led, as we said, four holes total in the four matches. This is... Kang for par. Well, you mentioned it. She's a great putter, and she's made some big ones today. She has, and it was always going to be the way. That's That has been her game. Statistically, the best category that she has on her game and on the American team. There's conventional wisdom that says if a player isn't as great of a ball striker, maybe you hide them in four balls. You actually think foursomes is a way that a player who isn't as isn't hitting it in as great a form as normal might be okay. Particularly around this golf course, it's very lopsided in terms of who's hitting the approaches in alternate shot versus who's hitting the putts. It's very easy to to do it around this course. Also, the other thing with foursomes is that you tend to not have to be so aggressive. You don't have to take on 
as many shots. So you can be conservative, which again takes a bit of pressure off your long game. This is Lingran for a birdie at the 15th. Tom, she's aiming this way out to the right. I had some right to left, but nowhere near as much as she was playing. Well, I hit the opponent's mark. I don't know if that helped or hindered it, really. And she did seem to give it just a bit too much there, John, as you say. Now, Lexi with a putt to win the hole, go back in front after the Europeans battle all the way back to square. And the U.S. got out to that three-up lead, but they really have not made a putt of any consequence yet today. I mean, they've been gave a given a couple holes and made a couple short birdies, but they haven't made anything like this all day, so see if they're due. Oh, right in the middle for Lexi Thompson and the U.S. go back to one up. And Megan Kang with the reaction there. This is one of the greens on the golf course that is slightly slower than the others. There are three greens out here, 5, 8 and 15, that are, have, they have to keep them a bit slower because there's so much slope and they need to find a lot of hole locations. Remember, there are five sessions, so they're going to have five places to put the flag during competitive play. Count to the 14th. Yeah, Noel Chris with the second. Go down, go down, go down. And there it is. Yeah, for a second, they looked like it went in the hole, but it was just long left. So Europe will have that birdie putt to come. We'll stay here at the 14th. You love that nod to the Spanish flag, don't you, on the uh, European headgear? And so, Nelly now. Very nice. Giving Allison a little putt there. Mm. Two up as they play 14. Three up with four to play would be um, awfully formidable. A formidable start for the Americans. Lexi Thompson with a huge birdie putt at 15 to put her and Megan Kang back up by one. At the 14th, this is Leona McGuire. She and Anna Norquist would, could really use this one. Looked like a good roll. It did. She gave it a, a, a good chance. But now, now you have Alison Corpus with a chance to extend the lead. Thirteen. See yeah, Ali Ewing. America's driven it down the right side into the. There are a couple of bunkers down the right, and this one's really not easy, Karen. It's right at the front of the uh, lip of the bunker. It's taken a long time to decide. She needs to uh, carry this 101 yards to carry the Baranka. And instead, just going to play out and hope to get up and in for a par. Team Europe is on the green with a birdie putt. Still a chance to get it up and down for the U.S. Walk away with uh, a half. Let's go back to 14. And a big putt here for Allison Corpus to go three up with four to play. I think we've seen more putts lip out today than go in. Honestly, there's something wrong with the edges of the Cubs. <laughs> <laughs> there's nothing, let, there's not letting them in at all. Okay, so, I mean, two down to four to play is not great, but three down to four to play is almost impossible. Allison so steady, so calm, as we saw at Pebble Beach. 
Second shot for Georgia Hall at the 15. All uphill. It is, and as, as John was saying, I mean, it is an incredibly tough shot because, you know, you're playing blind. Um, you've got a long shot in off of an upslope, but the ball's going to come in fairly flat because you're hitting from below its surface. So getting it to control it is, is not as easy. from there you can get a little hop back towards the green but not if you miss it that far right that flew a long way miles right yeah took her by surprise it appeared we're at the 16th and after regaining the lead here's Lexi 28 years old now So she five previous appearances, her sixth appearance. She's got a winning record in foursomes, and she's trying to add to it here. Megan Kang teed off, kind of fanned her tee shot. A good thing she fanned it, because it would have reached that fairway bunker, but as it is now, just in that first cut, all above Lexi's feet a little bit, 198 total, though anywhere in the middle of the screen would be a fantastic, especially with a one-up lead right now. I'm sure that's all she's looking for, aiming well to the right, for the draw and sling it in there. It's at the right side of the green. Oh, it's really well played. Had a little of the Lexi lean going there. It's a player who hit more greens over the last decade than anybody on the yep. LPGA Tour. A little down this year. Yep. Kind of indicative of the rest of her game. Just a little anomaly, I, I think, for her. You know, she's been on tour for so many years that it's, you know, probably needs a little bit of Solheim Cup adrenaline to, to get the fires going within her again. 15. Second shot for Andrea Lee. Remember you saw uh, Georgia Hall miss the green quite a long way right for Europe. <coughs> like it was a bit heavy. Managed to get all the way up there. Oh, what a shot this is. Oh, yeah. A bit of extra run. Maybe not by design. Well, it worked out. All right, Lexi on the green. Here's Lynn Grant second. 189, not as good of an angle. This is way to the left, and that is a deep bunker over there. She turned away. Yeah, natural shop shape is a draw, but she was aimed a little left of that flag, so. A win on this hole would uh, guarantee at least half a point for the Americans. This is third shot for the U.S. at 13. From 64 yards out of light rough. Yeah, good shot. Advantage to Europe here. Remember, this is the match with the Americans have the big lead, five up through 12 holes. It is the opening session of the 2023 Solheim Cup. We're in Spain for the first time, down on the south coast, the Costa del Sol, where the Americans are ahead. Today's coverage of the Solheim Cup is brought to you by the new Ping GLE3 family. Give your game the attention it deserves. at the 15th. Tough one here for Georgia Hall. She kind of clipped it, Karen. That was re absolutely remarkable. You can get those shots out of the Bermuda rough where yep. you just clip it with a lot of spin. With no height, a little low checker. That'll be a four. The Americans still have a putt to win that hole, remember? This really is a must-make. The Europeans are not quite in for a four, but you would think they're going to make par. This is a par putt here for Ewing. Oh, dribbled it down the hill. Ali playing really well. Let's go to 16. And a third a moment ago for Maya Stark. One of the, one of the deepest greenside bunkers on this golf course. Oh. That did not sound good. No, cut very close to the ball there. I think Kang's going to have a birdie putt in a moment, and two putts might be enough to win the hole. 
What a match this has been. Thompson and Kang won the first three. The Swedes have come back, but now Kang will have a putt to go two up. Charlie to tie. Yeah. Earlier on, we saw Charlie stretching her back when she hit a shot out of the uh, bunker in the early stages of the match. And she was a little ginger there, pulling the ball out. Let's go over to the 15th. And a putt to win the hole for the U.S. And if you're a European player, you don't want to see Daniel Kang over this putt. a putt that did not get conceded when the Europeans had had their putt conceded. I think that one was is slightly longer at 15. All right, this to go, two up with two to play. Megan Kang a moment ago. Saw Maya Stark with the bunker shot that went uh, through the green. And now Lynn Grant, this to tie the hole. Look out. Whoa. They are not done yet. Thievery. They escape with the tie and stay one down with two to go. That's impressive. Danielle Kang goes ahead and holds a long one a couple of holes back to do a very similar kind of thing. That's not something... I mean, you try and prepare yourself mentally that they might make it, but really in the back of your mind, you're not expecting it. Mm. 15. Long hole for these two. This is Maguire up the hill. Norquist not the longest player off the tee. Stepping back off the shot. See how much better up the little shot she had there. Not quite enough. That's going to be tough. Anna's, Anna's not known for her bunker play. A few times today, the length has been tricky for this pair. Yep, absolutely. It's long. I mean, Danielle Kang and Andrea Lee have kind of coped with it okay lengthwise, but for those two, it's, it's been an issue. Especially playing against Nelly Corp. Right. You're playing against somebody who can really boom yeah. it out there, and Corpus is just really steady off the tee. There are some long holes out here. And 15 falls right into that category. Second shot for Corpus. This one's 4.41 today. She may have hit that out to the right, but it's going to be fine. I'm not sure she loved it with that reaction, but it's absolutely fine. She'll be pretty happy when she gets up there. can't see where the ball finishes when you're down in the fairway just no idea it doesn't look like there's a lot of room up there but once you get up to the green it's quite a sizable putting surface and this is the par 3 17th Lexi Thompson on the tee for the US playing just a touch over 150 today this is eight iron for Lexi and you really got to collect yourself right now and, and forget about that last putt you're thinking you're gonna be two up and two to play Got to let it go, take a couple deep breaths, and just make another good swing here. Eight iron. Oh, the Lexi lean going. Where's that one? Right edge of the green. It's the right distance. It should be okay. Leans like she absolutely hates it, like she's hit it off the planet, and it's not bad at all. She's done that her whole career. Not been a great year for Lexi, but I, I, mean, I have a feeling that if she has a good week here as we get a look at this 17th. That's what it looks like without all the fans in place. 
Yeah, Tom, obviously a point is a point is a point, but if Lexi can get on the board early this week as an individual, put a point up for my team, I think she's a different player the rest of the week. Taking our pictures this week from uh, UCOM, the German broadcaster, so we don't have as much control. Now, Lynn. Eight iron as well. Starting at the hole, turning over slightly. Uh, this could come back a bit. There's a little bit of a slope there. Mm, it's going to come back a good a bit. Yeah, not, a, not a great shot after making that mm -mm. putt. Needed to carry it on. Hit a good one there. Get the crowd going here in Europe. This is the area where you're going to get a lot of noise. The 16th green comes up on the left, and then you saw that 17th hole. It goes back the other way. It's an area of the golf course with a couple of holes next to each other, which you don't really get on the back nine here. Let's go to 14. This match could end right here. Emily Pedersen, five down. Yeah, Europe needs to win this hole or the match is over. This is the bunker shot here for Europe at the 15th. And a Nordquist. And she's ranked 164th on tour in sand saves. But the lovely little chunk and run there. But this is the Solheim Cup, isn't it? It's That's different. right. <laughs> now, if you're playing foursomes, does that count as a sand save? Because somebody else is making the part. Yeah, we'll give it 50 to you. 50% credit. <laughs> <laughs> Cheyenne Knight, second shot. After a beautiful drive, yeah, just 90 yards left. <coughs> well, she was trying to keep that under the hole, but underjudged it. Again, the Europeans have to win this and each of the next four holes, even to scratch out half a point. Cheyenne just doing what she had to do, just hit the green. 15. A lot of people have made their way up to this green. It's not an easy walk to get out there. Uh, or get down there. Or, to the get, yeah, or get back. Yeah. Now Nelly, to win the hole, go three up. Trying to ease it down there. Doesn't quite have enough pace. Remember, this is one of those greens that not isn't quite as quick mm. as the other greens on the course. And these players are so dialed in with speed. Just take an inch less, a few inches less speed out of a green. Well, Charlie Hope probably needs to make this 14. This is a good 40 plus footer uphill. Not the easiest to have to make from that distance. Hopefully Charlie's okay earlier stretching a bit haven't seen a stretch since though it's good all right that was a moment ago and now a couple of putts to win the match for ali ewing and she got a good sense of the speed and the read off of the europeans putt it is just outside of 35 feet A really good pace. Ooh, actually, that that went by. Dude, that's not good. Gimme. Nope. No. As a roar erupts around the Andalusian hills, just after noon local time. And you can normally tell in these uh, Solheim Cups or Ryder Cups if it's a home roar or an away mm -hmm. roar. We know who she's rooting for. And if it's ole, 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 we have a pretty good idea. Definitely you, something a bit good like just a happened European there. roar. Cheyenne Knight, we mentioned it earlier. She did play some match play and team golf for Alabama, but had never played for the U.S. She did win the Dow Great Lakes Bay Invitational, which is not match play, but is a team event. And that was with Elizabeth Zokel back in July. And she got no Solheim Cup points for that because it was a team event. But it certainly was noticed by Stacy Lewis, and she got the call from Stacy 
after the CPKC Women's Open last month that she would be a captain's pick, and she was overjoyed. Now she's got a putt, put a point on the board, the first of the day for the U.S. Great to be expecting some putts, whether the first putt of the day or the last putt of the day. And that is point number one for the U.S. Cheyenne Knight in her Solheim Cup debut. Teams up with Allie Ewing. They win going away. That is a five and four victory over Charlie Hall and Emily Patterson. I, I do think that Emily and Charlie could have played that a little differently if they'd switched it around. Um, not sure I'd want to give up on that partnership just yet because I want to see them play the course the other way around. But we'll see. Neither one of them really got anything going anyway regardless. I'm not sure that they'll get another chance, but we'll find out. Big one here. Maguire at the 15th to tie the hole. That's the big roar. That was a hard hole for those two. Up the hill, 441 yards, not long players. They battled it out for a four. Let's go to the 17th, and Maya Stark second. Okay, so that'll be a three at best for Europe. The United States will have a putt to win the hole. Well, great performance in that last match, and Kay is with the a winning American pair. Yeah, it sure was. Uh, you guys pretty much dominated from the start. Um, how <laughs> you guys put the first point on the board for Team USA, and you're the last match out. What does that say about your match today? Yeah, I think we came out um, obviously very nervous, but uh, knew that they were going to be there, and we were ready to take on the day. And uh, Cheyenne here, glad she could get her first point out as a Solheim Cupper, so I was happy to be a teammate of hers. Exactly. One of the three rookies that were put out this morning, and you bring a point to Team USA. What was experience like? Talk me through what the first tee was like and as the, the day progressed. Well, first of all, I'm so thankful for Allie. <laughs> I had someone there me calm and she's been helping me last week when I had questions and so she was so great to lean on and the first tee I was nervous I, and Stacy was like are you okay I'm like we need to get this going but it was awesome uh, nothing like it I've never experienced anything like this so just really grateful and excited to put a point on the point on the board for USA it's different coming over to foreign territory and you guys are trying to quiet the crowd. What has the experience been like playing over here in Spain so far? Yeah, I mean, uh, my first in Scotland, a lot of Olays, a lot of Europe, a lot of, uh, you know, things that I think you can get pumped up. Um, but a lot of USA fans here. Um, we had a lot of great fans travel. Um, so try to hear that a little bit more than the others. And um, yeah, excited, excited with uh, the first point on the board. Job well done. Congratulations, Grant. All right, the fourth foursomes match played by Allie Ewing, and that is her first victory. 17. This is a par part here for the U.S. at the 17th. Okay. Birdie attempt a little heavy-handed. And the Europeans will have their par attempt coming up, so... Bit of a, a surprise there that the Americans were going first for the uh, three. Let's go to 16. And that's Leona McGuire after that great escape at the 15th. And again, two down with three to play. You think, can we maybe just steal half a point at this point? I think that the Suzanne Pedersen is, is trying to cat is is desperately hoping for that right now. Right, this to stay alive here, 17. Yeah, huge putt. Oh, no. It's one to forget for Lynn Grant. And a big win for the Americans in that first match. Another point on the board for USA. Megan Kang and Lexi Thompson, 2-1 and one over the young Swedish dream team in the foursomes of Stark and Grant.
And that is, uh, I think, a bit of a surprise with the history that those two Swedes yep. had uh, in foursomes play and the way that Lexi was playing coming in here, Karen. Uh, no question about it. Uh, but I like the, the fact that Lexi Thompson is so good on Bermuda grass. Pairing with Kang was obviously an inspired combo by Stacey Lewis. Americans lead two to nothing at the Solheim Cup. Europeans are on the ropes in this match as well. Anna North was second at 16. <laughs> Just when her team needed it. We've seen her do that before the in these matches. <laughs> her 28th Solon Cup match. Trying to steal half a point maybe 17 this match is all square daniel kang on the tee and both teams with nice t-shirts there boutier and hall representing europe in this match and it's been close just one hole the most that uh, either team has led in that second match out and we will go to the 16th hole and so we saw anna nordquist's second to within maybe 10 feet. But first, Allison Corpuz. Stacey Lewis said it to Kay Cockrell uh, on the first tee. She said, it's a quiet room that we have. We have a lot of players who are very mm -hmm. steady. They're, they don't show a lot of emotion. She said, I don't know what to make of that. She said, we're <laughs> about to find out. Corpuz is nothing if not steady. Uh, she is about as steady as they come. And I think that for, for Nelly, that's a, that's a nice combination for her. Uh, Nelly's got a lot, lot of firepower. She can go ahead and, and take on uh, this golf course. And Corpus is just steady for her, just to allow her to hit those par fives. And we've seen Nelly hit a lot of the second shots to the par fives, which has been to her strength. So I, uh, I shortchanged Anna. That was closer to five or six feet. And that'd be a birdie putt for Leona McGuire. And a chance here for Corpus. If she makes and Europe misses, then this match is over. Opening for the Europeans. A birdie putt to win the hole coming up for Leona McGuire. First, 17. Andrea Lee for the birdie. Both great looks here. This is the tougher of the two putts. Europe, a very straight one up the hill. This one moving to the right, pretty good. Put the pressure on if it goes in, though. Great putt from the rookie. So now the Europeans will have a putt to avoid going one down with one to play in what could be a clean sweep of foursomes for the U.S. for the first time ever in the Solheim Cup. But uh, Leona McGuire would love to really dash those hopes. This is for Birdie to get within one. Okay, Cockrell's now with this group. I am, and if uh, you think of what Suzanne Petter said, Pedersen said, you want to have Leona McGuire on the course as much as possible. Yeah! And that's the reason why. The lead is one for the Americans as they make their way to 17. ahead to that par three 17th not much in this at all straight up the hill
Not a, not a difficult putt here, but after you see that one go in, it becomes incredibly hard. Not much in it, and straight up the hill. Oh, and it misses. And that is a huge putt there for Europe. And now, I mean, there really is a good chance that the U.S. will sweep this session. It has uh, been a dream start so far for Captain Stacy Lewis. And... Suzanne Pedersen may be scratching her head a little bit to uh, make some serious decisions for this afternoon. So we know the U.S. is going to win the session at this point, right? It's going to be at least two and a half points for the Americans. It'll be their third foursome session won since 2009. It's not their format, but it's been yeah. their day. It has, and I think there's been a little change in and in, in, in formula with Stacy coming in and using the st using the statistics to help formulate these pairings. Andrea Lee on the tee. The, up the hill, kind of a blind tee shot. You don't see it land. Let's go team, let's go team. I mean, the interesting thing there with, with Daniel Kang and Andrea Lee, they weren't really sure if they were going to be paired well, if they, if they were going to be a good partnership, in the same way as Mel Reed and Leona McGuire weren't sure if they were going to be a good partnership. Mm -hmm. Mel and Leona worked out just fine. I would say so. As are Danielle and Andrea. 17. And an orchestra on the tee. Anna was born for these moments, and she's been in so many tight matches. Good, solid play to the fat part of the green. I think if you're Anna, okay, you just got to feel like just put put the owner anywhere on the green, and she can make something happen. That's a really nice feeling to have with a partner. All right, so Georgia Hall and Celine Bouti must win the 18th to get half a point. Here, assistant captain Laura Davies in the background there. All right, 17. And Nellie Corder for the U.S. There's some room there for Nellie to get it inside the Europeans. And this has a really good line. Oh, it's a great result. Mm -hmm. And this match could be over here for the U.S. I ran into Justin Ray, the... Uh, Fame stats guru yep. in golf, and he's working with the U.S. team this week. And you know, he said, "I'm going to be out there, you know, giving the statistical analysis and my opinion on mm -hmm. what could work and what could not." Obviously, the captains have to make the decisions, and that really got me thinking about the way that uh, Stacy has put together these pairings yep. and the way Suzanne has uh, put together her pairings. And it, it, to me, it looked like it was stats versus going with your gut. You yeah, know? stats and stomach. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you see two wins already. And uh, you got one that could end at 17. And Kang and Lee in control. On that note about the stats, they were even keeping stats this week in practice. It, it was that detailed mm -hmm. that that's how seriously Stacy has taken the stats. It very much fits her style. Two fiery competitors, Suzanne and oh, Stacy, yeah. but different ways of going about things, huh? No question about it. And, and not only that, but it, in foursomes, how you pair everybody together as well in terms of who plays where, who's hitting the first tee shots, who's hitting the next shots. And if you're keeping stats on how everybody's playing those holes and those shots, you know who should be doing them. Well, it... Um it has been a tour de force today for the American Solheim Cup team, trying to stop Europe from winning a third straight Solheim Cup for the very first time in a format in which they have not excelled historically. They have excelled today, Karen. Completely. And I think credit to Stacey Lewis for thinking a little bit outside the box with some of her pairings. She had five rookies on her team to choose from to try and organize and make uh, a con con a congealed team, you know, mm. put them in the right spot. And I think inspired with Lexi Thompson, Megan Kang going out first, I think all of us were a little bit, whoa, surprised at that one, but it worked out really well. And I think in fairness, uh, the European team, they just haven't made the putts. So if you're looking across the board, the European team, on paper, that looked like a very strong group of players in, in you know, how they should be playing, but they haven't made the putts. And so much of Solheim Cup comes down to 
who's getting the ball in the hole. We talk about home course advantage. Yeah. But there is something to be said for quieting a crowd, isn't there? That can be deafening at times. We saw it at Inverness two years ago. Well, there is. But I also think that when I went out on this golf course for the first time, a couple of things sprung out at me. One is that it didn't really feel much of a home course advantage for the Europeans, given the fact that the greens are Bermuda greens. The American players are much more used to playing on Bermuda greens. They, a lot of them grew up on that grass and it does make a big difference. So I was always a little bit cautious of that factor. Yeah, playing at home, but then home course is, is yeah. a separate matter entirely. Yeah. And we think about Ryder Cups and so often the Europeans will choose courses where they play DP World Tour events. Yep. Not really the case here. The, mm -hmm. the Ladies European Tour doesn't play here regularly. They don't know this course. Well, here we are at the 18th and Boudier and Hall have to win this hole to get half a point. And John, what can you tell us about the Americans? They have already laid it up up the right side of the fairway. It, it kind of rolled down to the right. Couldn't tell if it stayed in the fairway or it got into the first cut, but either way, it's just fine. Europe now 233 to the front edge. She's got iron out. I, I really thought she might go for this. There's a cross bunker down there that's only about 190 yards to carry. Uh, but it looks like she's got iron out and will be laying it up as well, unless she's got enough in this to carry that cross bunker. But she, it looks like she's aiming down the right side. Little surprising being that you have to win this hole. Tie gets you nothing. Surprised? It's not her game, really, it's is re it? it? It really isn't. And, uh, I mean, you can see to the, the other side also have laid up. Um, so they're just betting on the fact that they're better with the short game. Um. We'll check back with them in a moment. 17. Deanna McGuire for a birdie. Extremely difficult left to right putt with two feet of break. Right need to go in for Europe and it does it's another moment in the Solheim Cup for Leona Maguire who just relishes this competition puts those sunglasses on the hat and is an assassin for Europe the Americans still ahead though in this match with a putt to go one up, walking to the 18th, and it's the rookie, Corpus. She's going to draw on her U.S. Women's Open experience. Made it. And that'll silence the crowd. Really good putt there from Alison Corpus when she knew she needed to make it. So they will have a one-up lead, and it'll be the same situation as the match ahead, where Europe have to win the hole in order to get half a point. So minimum three points guaranteed for the U.S. Advantage Americans in that match, though, with Nelly Corder being able probably to hit that green in two. Huge. This has been a massive session for Stacey Lewis's team. If you're just waking up uh, back in the U.S., you can see it's all red on the board, and the U.S. trying to sweep a foursome session for the first time ever in the Solheim Cup, which started back at Lake Nona in 1990. It has been a really, really good day so far for the Americans here down in the south of Spain. Look at that big win by Ali Ewing and Cheyenne Knight, 5-4 and four, over Charlie Hull and Emily Pedersen, who had played together and had a winning record as a team together already in the Solheim Cup. And also an important win against the two young Swedes, Stark and Grant. So let's go back out now to the 80. And the third shot on this par five for Andrea Lee. 92 yards, 84. Perfect lie in the fairway and not guard. Taking in on the low side. She skips up there. Boy, it's just really dug in. I think she expected a much bigger skip there as low as she took it in. Big comebacks can often start small. And there is an opportunity, perhaps, for uh, half a point for Boutier and Hall. Back on the tee, Leona McGuire, who has kept Europe in it. 
massively uphill tee shot. Leona hits it low at a very low running shot. Uh, it's always going to be a three shot hole for, for Leona and Anna. All right, up ahead, Georgia Hall's third. Like we said, 84 yards. Lots of room to get inside that one the U.S. just threw in there. Good looking shot here. Oh, just a lot of spin. Oh. And it's a coin flip at this point. Again, if the U.S. ties this hole, they win the match. Europe has to win the hole to get half a point. Daniel Kang putting off against Celine Boudier. That, uh, that's pretty good. Back on the tee, Alison Corpuz. I think with the wind blowing the direction it is, this is even for a longer hitter, not going to be a par five to reach in two. Same situation for this U.S. duo. Tie the hole, win the match. It's a gorgeous property, a gorgeous part of the world. The Costa del Sol, the sun coast of Spain. First time that this country has hosted the Solheim Cup just down the road from Valderrama, which hosted the Ryder Cup in 1997. A victory commandeered by the late, great Seve Ballesteros. Waiting to see the afternoon pairings for four ball. And certainly we'll see Carlota Segonda, the only Spaniard. And there'll be work to do. What, however these last two matches finish, a lot of work ahead for the Europeans today. Absolutely. But, uh, I mean, if you're, you're the European team, you, you have to hope that you can pull both of these out with a half. If not, one of them. I mean, every little thing that you can chip away is going to make a difference. And you can't overcome it in, in one big hit. You've you still got to think ahead. You've got, you know, three more uh, team play sessions and then a whole bunch of singles coming up. So you have to, you know, think long term, but do reassess on, on what's happening and, and try and figure out a way for your team to start making some putts. If you're the American side, just keep your foot on the gas and don't let up. You know, don't give the Europeans any room for breathing. You know, don't give them a little chink of hope. Mm. Just bury them. That's what you got to do. All right. So Danielle Kang has this putt. If it drops, then the U.S. wins the match and you guys were referencing the away crowd michael there's two types of players. ones who like the roars at home and silence no question my mind is the latter cart moving back in the fairway she stop danielle is one of only three players on the american team who has tasted solheim cup victory that was back in 2017 lexi thompson and angel yen the others. Okay. Europe is going to have a putt to get half a point. It's going to come off the blade of a player who has gone from good to great this year. Two wins entering the season for Celine Boutier. She outdueled her partner today, Georgia Hall, in Phoenix to win the drive on championship at Superstition Mountain. She then won a major on home soil, Mundi Evian Championship, and then one in Scotland as well. Stacy Lewis sitting at the front edge of the screen on the left side, just all by herself, taking it all in. Yeah, we can see her there. She's like what she has seen from any angle today. For half a point, Celine Boutier. Not enough, just not enough.
Tanyo Kang and Andrea Lee, the veteran and the Solheim Cup rookie, take down Celine Boutier and Georgia Hall, handing them their first loss as a team. And they win it one up, and they shoot three under par in mm -hmm. foursomes this morning. That is, I mean, mightily impressive. I mean, Andrea Lee knew that she wanted to play with Danielle Kang. I think the, I think Danielle was a little bit worried about the distance perspective. Mm -hmm. But as Stacey said, you've just got to go ahead and play your game. And they played their game, and their game was, was good enough to beat one of the top partnerships on the... European team. You think there's pressure in a Solheim Cup. How about to make the team? Andrea yeah. Lee had to finish 13th in the final qualifying event to make the team, and she finished right on that number. Here's Nordquist second. Going with a hybrid layup, trying to pick a, a spot in the mountains to aim at. It's a mountain to climb for Europe. It's three wins for the Americans. The U.S. has been great early. Mm -hmm. They've been good in the middle. They've been great late. Yep. Now Nelly. Nelly actually has an outside shot of getting there in two, 245 to the front. Oh, there it is, still coming to rest while we have a moment. Down to John Wood. All right, Andrea, Danielle, what a match. Tell me what was going through your, I heard you say my heart was pumping on that putt on 17. Take me through that. Yeah, I mean, it was a close match all day, and I, I knew it was going to come down the stretch, and Danielle had a great shot into 17, had a 10-foot left-to-right putt, and yeah, I, I don't think my heart ever pumped that fast before in my life. <laughs> a lot of times in foursomes, two, three over wins. You guys shot three under on your own ball, which is an incredible score alternate shot. I mean, what what do you love about your teammate this is one. Honestly, I'm just so proud of her. It's been her first showing, first Solheim Cup match, and she held it together. I know she was safe, she was nervous, but she was hitting shots. She was stiffing it all day, giving me birdie chances. And when I put her in a tough spot, she still left me alive. So I told her I got it. I'll clean it up, you know, and it's just been really, really fun and enjoyable today. For either one of you, it's so important individually to get a point on the board early in these things. You almost feel like you're playing with the house's money. Um, is, how important is that to you for your play for the rest of the week? Yeah, I mean, this is a huge confidence booster, especially for me being my first match ever in a Solheim Cup. And, you know, it's it was so nice to have, you know, Danielle, who's like a sister to me, you know, have my back. And I knew I can trust on her short game and her chipping. She's such a great, great chipper. So um, I think just, yeah, just a big confidence booster. Well done, you guys. Congrats. Good luck the rest of the way. Very proud of Melissa. <laughs> Danielle, the leader of that duo, and that third for Leona is a good one. They've got to win the hole to get half a point. And Allison Corpuz, Karen, is trying to become the third U.S. Solheim Cup rookie to get a win today. I mean, just incredible, really. I mean, what a, what a performance across the board. I mean, they got off to a fast start, got up early, and they never really looked back. The American team and that's it just goes to show you just how important those first few holes really are yeah, they have largely quieted this crowd so Nelly's second we saw come to rest up there around the green and Allison Corpuz is going to have a third on this par five and Anna Nordquist is going to have a putt for birdie You've been on both sides of this, though, Karen. It's If you're Suzanne, you say this was session one of five, right? Exactly. Obviously, it's a bit of a shocker. You, you don't want to, to have that, that happen, to, to lose all four, but it's happened in the past. You know, teams have lost the whole session. Um, but you just kind of have to make sure that you, you keep focusing, you, you keep putting your best possible combinations out, and it, it might... The unfortunate thing for Suzanne is this might handcuff her with regards who she plays and who she rests now. She might have to go to the world with Leona and get Leona to play five matches again. Mm. Um, which is what the unfortunate thing about losing a whole session does for, does for the team. Yeah. All right, so uh, what can you tell us about this third for Corpus? 
it's actually kind of a difficult shot because you're hitting from a low area up to the elevated green. She has 21 feet of green to work with and is lucky that the ball did not get into the heavy rough. So she has a nice lie. Hit a little firmly, but she wanted sure she got. Yeah, you can't get cute no, and leave it short, right? She did what she needed to get it on the green. Give your partner a chance. I mean, Nelly, Nelly's made a couple of good putts today. What's to say she's not going to make this one too? I watched Allison yesterday with her caddy, Jay Monahan, and she was trying to bump some shots. Mm -mm up these uh, closely mown areas. And she just said, uh, they tried a couple and said, yep. I've just got to take my medicine and just throw it up there, make sure I get it on the green. And that's just what happened yep. here. They're, one, they're too steep and they're too grainy. Grabby and grainy, mm -hmm. yeah. All right, so Nelly's going to have a putt. If it goes in, they win the match. If it doesn't, then Anna Nordquist will have a putt to get half a point. This is a much more difficult putt for Team USA because Number one, it's further away. And she's also, the screen tilts from left to right. And she's putting down grain, so it's going to be very fast. Nellie's going to have to put this very cautiously. Whereas Team Europe has pretty much a straight up the gut putt. Two chances for this the Europeans. Green, this green grant is so, you think it looks fairly, but, but, but up here and realize just how tilted it is. Karen Anna Nordquist has a knack for pulling off some pre pretty miraculous shots down the last few holes. Yeah, she sure does. Okay, that, and I think if you're Anna, You've got to fall back on a on a punning stroke that is is a little bit smoother uh, than the one she's had. She's been trying to hit them a little bit, Kay. So nice smooth stroke here. U.S. still with a par putt, but this to get half a point and avoid a clean sweep. They'll need help from Allison Corpuz. The afternoon four ball pairings have been announced. Nellie's not going to play. Allison is going to play in four ball. And it's going to be a pairing that we thought we might see because of the relationships. Her caddy, Jay Monahan, down there lining up this putt, married to Jennifer Cupcho. And it's going to be Corpuz and Cupcho in one of the afternoon four balls. Leona McGuire will play with Georgia Hall. And a Nordquist will sit out the afternoon session. But this putt for Corpus to make it a an historic clean sweep for the Americans in foursomes. This is longer than the birdie putt that she made at the last hole. Probably six and a half footer. I think she can play it pretty pretty much inside the hole if she hits it firmly, which she needs to. Yeah! Flawless. The Americans go 4-0 and in foursomes. Capped by Nelly Corda and Allison Corpuz winning one up on Leona McGuire and Anna Nordquist. Remarkable. Absolutely stunning. I mean, uh, again, 
all credit to the American team. They absolutely played their hearts out today. They were determined. They got the pairings right. They played the quality golf. They made the putts when they had to. And, and just generally outplayed the European team this morning. First time the U.S. has ever swept a foursome session. Just the second time either team has done it. Stacey Lewis last night in noting the passing of both Shirley Spork, LPGA founder, and Kathy Whitworth, the all-time wins leader since the last Solheim Cup, said, I want my team to play with the spirit of Shirley and the fire of Whit. They did today. And they're up 4-0. We don't say nil in golf very often, do we? Uh, not very often at all. And it began with Lexi Thompson, hit the opening tee shot of this Solheim Cup. At a time when she's had less confidence than she's ever had in her career, playing with a player who's got more confidence than she's ever had, Megan Kang. They take out the Swedish rookie duo of Stark and Grant. Boudier and Hall lose for the first time as a team to Danielle Kang and the rookie for the U.S. Andrea Lee. McGuire loses for the first time in Solheim Cup play with Nordquist to Corpus and Ewing and Knight win over Hall and Pedersen. Back down to Kay Cockrell we go. All right, I'm here with the winning duo of Nellie Corda and Allison Corpus. I'm going to start with you, Nellie. Four points on the board for Team USA in foursomes, which uh, it, it never happens. Uh, why do you think, first of all, the USA team came out so strongly today? And secondly, why you two were both so good? One, I think everyone that played together had really good chemistry, and then our captain, too. I mean, she paired us up really well, and for us, I mean, my partner made some really clutch putts coming in on the, uh, towards the end, and we just had a lot of fun, and, you know, they gave a good fight towards the end, but um, we held tough. Yeah, it came all the way down to the wire. Two big putts on the last two holes. You won the U.S. Open earlier this summer, but can you describe how different the pressure is playing in a situation like this today? Yeah, I think just knowing that, I mean, I'm playing for the team, right? It's not just for myself. There's that added pressure and just, just having all the fans out here. But, I mean, it's so much fun. Like, everyone said the first tee was going to be nuts. And then I walked out there and it was somehow even crazier than I expected. But, yeah, I had a ton of fun with Nelly out there this morning. Three rookies were out in this morning session. You, one of them, and you all brought points home. Um, we talked about how you guys aren't really truly rookies in that you're so experienced. Um, what was that experience like that you brought to today? I think it helps that, I mean, like Nelly said, the team chemistry has been great all week. And, yeah, I think just knowing that she's a veteran and she's such a great player um, just definitely gave me a lot of confidence. Nelly, you guided around this rookie very well. This is now, <laughs> this is now your third Solheim Cup. What has this experience been like for you and now that you're kind of, quote, a veteran? Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, it's been so much fun. I mean, anytime I get to represent the Stars and Stripes, it's the biggest honor. And I've had more away games than at home, so I'm kind of used to the crowd being against us. But I think we fed off of, you know, the USA chance. We found... Um, we found the USA chance in the crowd, and um, we just uh, grinded our way to 18, one up. You lost the first hole, but it didn't phase you. A big win today. Congratulations on an excellent morning session, Grant. Just uh, remarkable. And uh, these two are going to go out later in the afternoon. Rose Zhang is going to play with Megan Kang. We'll see the highest-ranked American as well, Lilia Vu. She'll go out in the afternoon. She'll play with Lexi Thompson.